if you can see me, for some reason that camera froze. I was so ready to go. Everything was looking good, and now it froze. So I'm gonna have to upgrade from Twitch, I think, beta, beta. And see if I can't make this, you know, do what I want it to do. Ooh, Inception. As I try my darndest to make this work. Because, like, I needed to. All right, well, that's at least a different view. Okay, we have it. We have it. I think we have it. Of course, that camera now froze, so that makes sense. Uh, we're going to try again. We're going to refresh that device, the one that sees my face, because I think you want that. We can, uh, you know, go to this one or this one, see how it works, save it, and hope that everything is now moving. There you go. Everything is now moving. Yay. So this camera, which shouldn't be my microphone, but for some reason is, um, this camera, be my microphone. Hold on, let me mute it. I can move that one. So you can see more of like everything that I'm doing. I, I literally have a microphone here for some reason. It's not reading it uh, as something you guys want to hear. I hope you can hear me. Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Amber Nicole. Um, and today, I'm gonna pick up, I'm gonna do a couple of things, actually. I'm gonna pick up on that dyeing of the shirts that we left off on, on Thursday when I like surprise streamed. Uh, it's ended up kind of looking like a doll a little bit at this point, but I think it's gonna give me the pattern that I want my first layer of dye. And hopefully with all these cameras, you're gonna be able to see everything that you want. And then there's uh, this one, which we put over a stretcher so I could like draw on it basically, and you could see kind of where I'm going with it. Um, we're gonna tie this one up first, and then we're gonna get out our dies. I do believe this one's gonna, the yellow one, is gonna kind of have like a greens and earthy on top of the neon. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, this blue one, Oh, uh, it's probably gonna go in the blues, blues and purples. Could just go straight blue. Um, the contrast is always nice. So, oh yeah, I gotta like do the thing. Uh, and also you see behind me a bunch of denim that I have set up. Uh, I'm cutting apart some jeans that I found on an, in an alley. Um, and I'm gonna make a bag out of them. And I just got a bunch of supplies in. That's the boxes you see here. Those supplies will hopefully be the wax bar and stuff that I bought, maybe some of the webbing. But I'm gonna make a backpack um, because I have a 17 and a half inch laptop. And the options for a bag for a 17 and a half laptop are limited by far. Um, and none of them have women's straps on them which is a huge problem for me. I really need straps for a woman and um, I don't want it to drag on my back and give me a backache. So I want it to be like really evenly distributed weight. I want the laptop to slip in, look slim. I want it to look kind of old school, traditional um, with a roll top back and I want it to be waterproof. In a perfect place, I'll even add pannier clips to it so I can clip it to my bike. So I'm gonna do a waxed recycled denim project and um, yeah, <laughs> um, uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, and I think I didn't name my stream right, so I'm gonna do that as I grab my um, stuff here. So this one is, we, we are going to tie, 
tie dye neon shirts and start a wax canvas laptop back pack um So the go live notification, which probably went out already, is this will be a less of a how to and more of a watch me solve creative problems, um, which people tell me is calming. Um, I have some challenges because I'm using that recycled uh, material that I need to solve, namely some math. Here are my do to do sketches, of course, like a good artist. I have sketched out my ideas, developed a plan. Um, Here's my first thinking and ideation going on and just trying to solve the layers and where, what's going to go where. So the webbing is super structural. Um, it helped me solve them things. And then so I came up with these designs, um, two different ones, A and B here. And uh, I started thinking about the straps and realizing they were really hard. So I did some research online and I actually found a commercial product that I've purchased that's going to be my straps, but I ha I'm waiting on the company to get back to me with pictures of what their attachment point looks like on their backpacks because their straps are interchangeable because they have a, a men's strap, a heavy men's strap, a petite woman's strap, a regular women's strap, and then a heavy duty women's strap. So that's like super awesome. And I'm just going to go with that because the straps are going to be the hardest part of this project. And here's what I think the back, the final design on the back is going to look like. Um, so like with a front, uh, like this with using one of those jean pockets, just to really make a nod to the recycled product, it's going to, it's going to have a slight taper from nine to ultimately what would be seven inches up here. So that taper will be long and thin. And then at the very top, I'm going to add an insert to bring it back out to nine, uh, cause I'm going to fold it in and then roll the top and that'll give me a nice water, not, uh, water proof but water resistant bag like I wouldn't want to submerge it but if I'm biking in the rain it should work really well um and I want the bag to slip I want my laptop to slip into the bag um and not poke out I, I at my first ideation had the laptop on the outside but I want to make sure it's really protected and part of that waterproof aspect and I want it along my back so it's less likely to be damaged. Um, and so it's going to have to have some kind of a pocket like um, that's like just an opening the back and it's going to slip in because I want to get through that TSA checkout real fast. Um, turns out uh, my grandmother is having some trouble walking, which is, I mean, it's not new. She's She's been in pain for a while. But um, since in two weeks I'll be vaccinated uh in two weeks I'm gonna go visit them in Alabama of all places uh I haven't seen them since well before lockdown they're getting older I miss them I like them so I'm gonna go visit uh just real quick three days I probably won't even live stream from there but I will be teaching classes there so I need to be able to transport this big bad boy of a laptop her name is Matilda by the way um, along with all my cameras because I'm teaching right so I need a solid bag to transport the laptop the cameras those kinds of stuff I can probably pack real well and check but my laptop has to come with me because worst case scenario I can teach from just that one camera on the laptop um, and it's like it's a Matilda's very beefy uh, Matilda is amazing. It's the best laptop I've ever had. So she goes with me. And um, and right now, Chadwick is using my Surface to teach from. And <laughs> so I have to travel with Matilda. Um, yeah. So it should be an interesting day of me being on the creative side. First things first, we're going to tie up and dye these shirts. Also in the corner back here, you may see the gray one. I might add another layer of dip dye on that gray, um, but I need a wider container to dye in because I'm getting some wrinkles on it that I don't want in the dyes. Um, I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what container is going to be sacrificed yet. I do have a dye pot. 
I'm not going to do it today. I'll do it next time. Um, I have a great big dye pot, but I think it's still got some teal dye in it, which could be an interesting addition to this. But I was really hoping to keep that one kind of monochrome. And here it is. I've been talking for 10 minutes and I haven't even started a project. So, you guys ready for this? Yeah, let's go ahead and wrap some, uh, I almost said band-aids. Let's wrap some uh, rubber bands. They both have band in them, totally legit. Let's, let's wrap the shirt with rubber bands. Now, you know, if you're tie-dyeing and don't actually have rubber bands, you can uh, tie-dye with like yarn or string tied around instead. Um, I have done it and I might even do it today depending on exactly how everything goes, how accessible rubber bands are to me. But um, this is the shirt, right? We have, um, we have a, a, a sun here and why didn't I fill in that sun? Dang it. Anyone have an answer for me on that? I would have wanted to keep that super light. Okay, this first dyeing is going to be really light because I want that sun to be lighter than the rest. So we're going to pick a light blue and it's just going to be a light blue. I'm going to walk on over here, mute, move my camera. So you can see my dye selection. Here are my dye tests. I think I want to go this one. This one is my first dyeing level. Um, yeah. And then we'll fill in the sun. So the sun's going to have some like swirly whirly textures. Let's do it. So that is 813 by um, Dynaflow, Jacquard Products. And maybe I should do some like itty bitty tie dyes on the sun. What do you think? I think that'd be just hilarious. So I'm gonna get some thread and I'm just gonna tie some itty bitty swirls. Where's my... My room got turned around a little bit, so not everything is where it usually is. Here we are. Ooh, we use this thread. This is coat thread, so it'll be really, really strong. Great for this project. I cut a longer length than I think I need, so I have plenty of room to um, tie, you know, tie things with it. Uh, tying knots is hard when you start getting really super short. Just like the sun has those vortexes and whirls on them, I'm gonna mimic that here. It would be really cool, I think, you know. In my head, at least, it would be cool. We'll see if it actually works, who knows. Everything's an experiment, and you just gotta go with it and pretend like it's what you intended to do, at least in my world. Um, Maybe if you like do this a million times a day, it's not an experiment anymore. Like there are people who like, that's all they do is they sell tie dye and stuff, um, which is cool. And I didn't tie that tight enough. So it slipped right off. Um, let's make this tighter. Uh, so yeah, if you um, do this all day, maybe you know exactly how this is gonna turn out. I don't, because I do a lot of different art all day like making bags, which will be step two today. Tie that real tight. Ooh, there we go. And, you know, keep a finger on it like you're tying a wad of newspapers to go into the recycling bin. Tighten it and pull down. That's better. Still wouldn't pull on it too much, but I think that'll give what we want. And I'm just gonna, right next to it, I'm gonna use that same thread um, to kind of give a random ap appearance to this. And I'm gonna tie another one. Let's tilt that down just a smidge. How about that one?
Does that look better? I think it does. And hello, visitor. I do see you, viewer. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm glad you're here. Nice. And since I still have some thread left, I'm going to do another one right near them. Following the direction of wherever the knot hit. And they're kind of random in size. Ooh, interesting. This is going to like automatically make a... Ooh, that's what's going to... Ha ha ha. Um, so... As I'm working this, I'm seeing these wrinkles developing around the sun, of course, because I'm bunching things. So maybe that's how I'm going to define the um, pattern that's being created with the dye overall. Well, it'll be like solar winds. You know, they're not really wind. I think it's it's not really wind. I, I think it's like photons uh, that, that press against like solar sails and stuff. Um, but you get the idea. And pull that through. Not bad. I'm going to do another one over here. Now, some of the disadvantages to using a resist like this, and you'll definitely see it more on the skull on the yellow shirt, is that it's going to crack as I pull on it. Uh, see right here and stuff it's gonna crack and bleed through and that's okay it still looks cool when that happens I have a bag somewhere where I actually used Elmer's glue as a resist it works um, if you just paint Elmer's glue on a shirt and then dye around it as long as you don't soak it for too long and let the Elmer's glue like get soft again it will fight the dye but it will end up with a cracked look um, as will this particular type of dye but that's okay I'm okay with that cracked look in my in my designs I haven't told everyone that I'm live yet should I do that on like Facebook and whatnot I probably should do you guys mind if I take a minute go live I'm sure it'll be fine right well Instagram because it auto posts to Facebook <sighs> Oh, it's a cute oh, Bearded Baking Co. makes adorable cakes and they just posted something. All right, let's see here. Do do do. When do we go home? I feel like I'm always like some kind of techno noob all the time. So I'm going to add a feed post. No, I'm going to go live. I want to go live. Create new, not a feed post, not necessarily a story. I want to go live. Oh, they make it so much harder. There we go, live. Are you ready? Should I do this? Live, right? Should I use a filter? Filters are fun. So many of the beauty filters, though, I feel like are wicked overdone. Um, Hollywood skin, you know, make my skin look amazing. Just glitter, probably just glitter, because who doesn't love glitter? Um, or like lots of color. Color, let's do color. Uh, cool. Let's choose that. Hello, friends. I am live on Twitch right now, and I'm demonstrating today um, some more tie-dye projects, like in in steps. Um, the blue shirt that I'm working on with the um, the solar and the um, various space theme, as well as this yellow tie-dye shirt that I'm working on that actually has a skull on it right here if you can see that I'm going to dye this it does kind of look like a silly doll at the moment but that's the the pattern I want on it and I'm also going to do this really weird thing um where uh, I take some jeans that I literally found in the alley behind my house 
and make a bag out of them that works for my um, that works for my laptop because I've discovered there's a problem with um, 17 and a half inch laptops that they don't make women's bags. Uh, you can use a men's bags, but we all know that's not gonna cut it quite for us. So if you really want to add some color to your day, because I will be dying and I'm dying in neon colors, stop by and join me on Twitch. I'll leave the link here. I hope you'll join me. Um, it'd be fun to have people. Bye. So, live on Twitch, right now. Do you think they'll get it? <laughs> I don't know. I just do this stuff and hope it works. Like, really? That's all I'm doing. <laughs> live in Twitch. Am I in Twitch, like in the Matrix or um, Tron? Right, Tron was the one where they brought them inside. Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash um, charter tutoring watch me my die do shirts die shirts and make waxed canvas bags do, 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 post. Do you think it'll help? Oh my God, look at this adorable cake from Bearded Baking Co. It looks like a garden with a gnome and little itty bitty mushrooms. It's adorable, okay? This is the quintessential of adorableness. Of course, then it changed my face, so it must mean I am adorable. Um, again, we're gonna keep tying these little itty bitty, witty bitty, witty bitty, 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 um, tie-dye bursts so that my son looks like it has the same like flows that a um a real star has and um <laughs> yeah you know uh we want that right uh i think it's gonna be really interesting now <laughs> you know people always like to ask like oh could i buy something like this off of you do you know how much time it is taking me to make this um like, no, <laughs> I make this stuff for me. I learn from it, I experiment. I'd be happy, like I'm doing right now, to teach you how to do it and I would encourage you to do it. But like, I was just at the bookery and we were talking about how, how do we draw, uh, Benjamin and I were talking about how do we draw like limits and say no to things that we're like really interested in, want to support, but really just don't always have the time to do. It makes us sad and like we want to support the missions, but we just recognize that our lives are sometimes, we wouldn't be able to do the project justice. Um, <laughs> Hi, Anna Curry. So today I'm dying. My dot, my drawing is a die. Actually, this is going to be a solar system on a shirt. You can see I've already drawn like a satellite on it uh, mm. on the sleeve here, and there's a comet. We're putting a, a we're making some patterns on the sun, some whirls that'll look like the storms that kind of exist on the sun's surface. And then, um, you, you know, on the pocket, you can see more like stars and comets, and that'll be the front. And this project will have a little skull, if you can see this, on the breast pocket. And it's going to have kind of this radiating pattern coming from the neck. I think I'm going to do this one in like greens, not quite camo, but greens and natural colors. Um, this one is going to be, I think in blues, maybe touches of purples, but definitely blues. So just like the shirt I'm wearing today, which I also dyed, and you guys saw last week, I added the branding to the, the shirt. See here, you can see it. It works. I'll get down lower here. Eee, look, it's a, it's a sticker with my brand. Um, so I'm going to do the, a similar dye job on this. Oh, I'm happy to show you. It's what I love to do. Um, I'm, I'm so glad you asked, really. 
um, because I feel like I'm just talking sometimes, but I love talking, so it's not a problem. Please don't hesitate to ask any questions at all. I'm really happy to answer. I'm, what I do is I teach kids science using art. Um, so I'm a teacher, so I can't help but just kind of want to tell everyone how to do everything. Um, and I want to encourage you to do it too. So hopefully I'm showing you enough that you'll be like, ooh, I'm going to go buy a t-shirt from some discount place and start dyeing it. And tulip brand dyes work for you if you don't have the, you know, the fancy Dynaflow Jacquard products that I have. You can do all this. Heck, you can do it with Sharpies um, and some alcohol. <laughs> I'm your favorite teacher. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's amazing. I win today. You've made my day. Um, I love being people's favorite teacher. Um, and I just really, really love um, showing people how to do stuff and encouraging them to be, you know, creative like like me so that we can just have a more creative and beautiful world. If everyone created everything they thought of in their head, just imagine how amazing the world would be. We don't have to limit it to just the artists and engineers. We can all be amazing, beautiful creators. It's like our purpose in the world, isn't it? Hi, Team Squad Gaming. Thanks for joining us. I'm so glad that you're here. Yeah, thanks for thanks for welcoming them, Anna. Um, it's uh, so nice to have friends. <laughs> I really want this place to be really warm and welcoming and just someplace people can come to ask like creative questions or just, you know, sometimes people like to listen to others talk like as they, they work and stuff. So I hope that they pick up some creative tidbits while they do that. Uh, and maybe get inspired to dye their own shirt. That would be just the coolest. So you can see I've kind of got this crumpling going on It's because I'm tying a bunch of really, really, really tiny tie dye spots right here in the sun because I want it to have a whirl pattern. Um, I don't know that I'm going to do it over like the whole thing quite that small. I'm getting on the smaller side for tying knots. I also don't want to use just one thread because if it comes undone, they'll all come undone. I am in the U.S. I'm actually in, I'll tell you, I'm in Manchester, New Hampshire. I don't mind telling you that because my brand, Unchartered, um, spelled this funny way, the way you see on my logo, is unchartered.org. And, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I do try to make money teaching kids science using the art. How about you, Anna? Where are you from? We see here Team Squad Gaming is in the U.S. That's cool. So here I'm making a bigger swirl just to kind of vary the size a bit. So one of the things I, I that's like the best thing that's happened for me, at least during the pandemic, is all my lessons can now be taught via a kit so like kids can sign up for my classes adults can too i mean i'm not going to turn you away and make stuff like this um this one's stinky slime and we learn science using art brazil Ooh, that is cool hey i'm someone's favorite teacher in brazil did you guys hear <laughs> that is awesome Maybe one day I'll be able to teach classes there. That would be cool. How's the uh, pandemic going? Are you safe from that? Are you able to distance or are you not able to? And your family too. I know a lot of people are struggling with that right now. The schools, my students. I worry about my students when I can't go and see them or take care of them. <laughs> Some of my kids' parents have had to work like in person through the whole pandemic and it's really hard for them with the remote learning and stuff. I worry. That's what all, all teachers do. Oh, you're, you're recovered. Oh, good. How bad was it for you? Did you, um, I mean, 
Were you, are you okay? Like, are you having long-term effects? I'm, I'm glad you're, you're in recovery or recovered. That's good. I just had my second vaccine um, Saturday and did okay, actually. Um, the, you know, the, it really knocked me out, I have to say. Sunday night, I felt like awful. Um, I really did not feel good. And it's been a while because the masking and distancing really made it so that I didn't catch anything for like the last year, which is pretty cool. But man, when it hit, I was like the biggest baby. Oh, I'm so sorry, Anna. Well, you have like healing and positive vibes coming from me. I hope, oh, at least you're home. That had to have been really difficult. That had to have been really hard. I'm glad you made it. Um, I'm so happy you're home. Um, that had to have been a real struggle. Gosh, that that's hard. I hope you feel better. Yeah, it's been a challenge. We're we're learning a lot. I'm excited for the technology that we're developing from it. Like it it sucks to see. Ooh, see, I pulled I pulled one. Did you see that? I accidentally pulled on it too much, so I pulled it out. Bummer. Um I hope we like learn from it something. I don't it doesn't have to be anything necessarily um in that that I think we should learn, but just something. Things about people, about ourselves, the world. I just hope we end up in a better place for it. But that's one of the reasons I do what I do is I'm really hoping that by giving kids like the idea that science is fun, um, that maybe will increase our overall scientific knowledge and will respond to these things better and faster in the future. I don't know if it'll work, but if, if the kids, if the kids know more next time this happens, the, hopefully they'll be the leaders and the adults next time, who knows, right? Um, and we'll just, we'll do better. We'll do better. Fewer people will die and, and that kind of thing. <laughs> Not that I have any control over it, but if the kids know more science, if they're excited about science, maybe, just maybe we'll do better next time. That's my opinion. What do I know? I did spend five years in the pharmaceutical industry. As a biomedical artist, I did recruitment stuff and um, for clinical trials and uh, educational materials, those kinds of things. But now I get to have fun because I get to work with kids and you guys, you watchers, you people that are making this worthwhile. So here we, here we go. So we've got a couple of bunch of like little itty bitty, really tiny tie dye spots, which should turn out quite delightful. We're going to make the whole thing kind of stem from this sun. And then on the front, I'm not sure where we're going to pull from, but on this side, we are definitely going to do it like this. Um, so I'm going to tie it with a rubber band right here. And that'll give us our next like wave, if you will, in the tie dye form. Um, I'm not going to attempt to put a spin on this. I don't think that's going to do what we want. And I'm going to make it real tight. And then I'm going to move on. And I'm actually going to do like a crisscrossy thing. So it's not a perfect circle, circle, circle thing. Do, do, do. And pull this through. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm in, this is my studio. My husband and I bought this really, really old house. It was built in, believe it or not, 1890. Manchester is a really old town. Um, and this was the first room I renovated. And it was pink and it had carpet that smelled of diapers. And so I spent, I guess it was three summers ago, I spent almost the full summer um, renovating this space. And it's, it's even cooler than you think it is. <laughs> If you look on my Instagram, you'll see some like old posts of the renovations and stuff. But the, the ceiling was popcorn, which is just gross because it collects dust. And I scraped it myself. It was so gross. All the popcorn rains down on you and it's a slurry wet plaster mess. And then I painted it and the ceiling, you can't see it on video, but it glitters. 
my ceiling glitters <laughs> because I love glitter. It's a, it's a shimmer that's like holographic. It's kind of the best. Um, my walls are gray to emphasize the artwork um, of both this, like this artwork that students give me that are like, I love art and you're the best teacher and other such pieces from, from students I've taught either at the college level um, cause I've, I've been a, <laughs> I've been a college professor teaching typography and, um, and just artwork gifts, things that people think of for me and it's adorable. Um, yeah. So, and my floor, you gotta see my floor. You want to see my floor? You're not going to believe this. Okay. I'm going to show you my floor. I'm going to mute real quick. So, cause I'm going to move the camera with the microphone. So that floor <laughs> was one, we definitely started installing it like at 11 o'clock at night and had to stop at like 3 a.m. Um, at one point because it just was so much work and we were so dead. But um, I need to get a rubber band. I just, my husband just came home. I didn't know he was coming home. Um, I just heard him sneeze. <laughs> I need rubber bands. I'm getting rubber bands. I mentioned that, right? Rubber bands. Uh, so yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it kind of is. So I found this flooring and I fell in love with it. And I was like, there's no way we can afford this. No way at all. Um, so this is the carriage house. So, you know, old houses back then had to have a carriage house. So this is where the hay would have been stored. Um, and... I, I found this tile, so I reached out. It was a commercial type flooring by Shaw. And so I reached out to their local distributor. And I was like, just for kicks and giggles, how much is this per square foot? And um, I was like, there's probably no way I can afford it, but just, you know, why don't you just tell me? Why not? Why not? And uh, they went to give me a price. And I was like, no, look, you guys, I just want a price. Like, how bad is it? Like, there's no way, it's a small space. But they gave it to me. They like followed me on Instagram and were like, oh my gosh, you do so many cute things with kids. We love what you're doing. We're gonna give you the flooring. Um, <laughs> so I got this commercial grade flooring that like takes a beating like nothing else, which is great for a studio. And we put it in. Um, and it's amazing. Now, let me tell you, hexagons are like the worst tile ever to install, except for the rhombuses we did in our, our kitchen. But, um, and we are doing all the work ourselves, like quite literally all the work. So um, <laughs> this flooring, oh my gosh, uh, was so much work to install. Like I can't, I can't even. Um, and first we had to pour some cement down on top of the plywood to level out places. And then we had to like, figure out exactly where we wanted it and I designed the pattern and illustrator to like lay it out everywhere and <laughs> it was a tough one um hexagons if you get off in one direction it's going to end up off in like three directions so it was it was quite the challenge worth it I think in the end but still a challenge um yeah so I laid it all out we put it together my husband did a lot of that kind of work for me um with me even and then, um, yeah, and then I had flooring <laughs> and it cleans up really, really well. Like this dye that I get when it dr drops on it, even when it dries, I can clean it right off. Oh, and then we went to the Georgia Aquarium. I guess it was two years ago. Um, the Georgia State Aquarium where they keep the whale sharks um, has the same flooring, which is just cool. <laughs> like. A really heavy scientific institution, um, you know, picked a <laughs> picked the same flooring I did. Was my favorite food and drink? Mmm. My favorite drink is coconut water, hands down every time. Um, I love coconut water, especially when it has little bits of pulp in it. <laughs> I know it's not for everyone. My favorite food. Well, just about any baked good. Like, I shouldn't admit how addicted I am to sugar, but I am. So, um, you know, there's that. Uh, but, like, 
really my favorite like dinner food is sog paneer. Um, I, I'm really good at frying the cheese and the spinach gives me that iron boost I need. And uh, it's vegetarian, like, like I am. So it's just an absolute deliciousness. How about you? What's your favorite? What do you like to eat and drink? And I love spicy. I love everything spicy. Okay, this didn't quite get tight enough, but it's not tight enough to like wrap around again. So I'm gonna tie a little knot if I'm lucky. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna need help of something really thin, smaller than my fingers. Ooh, paintbrush will work, right? We'll wrap it around. Ooh, actually, that's a good question. Doritos pizza and water. Water's pretty good, too. I keep water on hand at all times. <laughs> yeah, those are good foods. Um, those are good. Can you, can you smell? Can you taste again? Like, are you able to eat your favorite foods after having had COVID? Because I bet that's challenging part of the challenge, right, of, of the disease. Do you like the spicy Doritos? Or is it Doritos, like pizza flavored Doritos that you like? <laughs> I know it takes a minute to type. Ooh, there we go. There we go, ooh, ooh, and it broke. Okay, but I got it a little tighter, so I think I'll get those ripples that I want, you know what I mean? Okay, nice, 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 nice. Very good, very good. Maybe. Another one here. What do you think? Pull that out. Get plenty of new wrinkles going so it's not just the same wrinkles. Get the sleeves really involved. What do you think? Right there? I like that. Right there. Nice and tight. <laughs> you like pizza made of Doritos. <laughs> that sounds incredible. Crunchy, gooey, Warm, salty, yeah. But I love baked goods way too much. There's a, that, that baking company that I showed you on Instagram earlier is less than a quarter mile. It's a five minute walk from my house, um, <laughs> which is a really bad thing. They weren't there when we moved in. It was a different bakery, but this new guy bought it and he ended up on like the food channel and stuff as a competitor and um, <laughs> This stuff is really good. Um, so I need to not eat there. Oh, anemia. You know, I have anemia too. Um, well, I have pre-anemia. I'm on iron. We all have challenges, right? Oh, I have a different problem. I need to lose weight. Um, I like to eat way too much and I'm a pretty good cook, so. You're fine. You got to practice somehow. Like never, never say you're sorry. You know what? That's what I'm learning. Um, don't say you're sorry for stuff like when you're learning and, and that kind of stuff. Instead, just say thanks for your patience. Like it puts you at an under position in comparison to whoever you're talking to. And you should you shouldn't do that because you're important and you're a cool person. I mean, look at you. You uh, you're great with the pictures in the text. You're you live in Brazil and and you're you, you probably speak Portuguese and English, right? Like, dude, you're cool already. And then you like pizza made of Doritos <laughs> and you're watching me. So don't be sorry when you're you know, when you're having a struggle with something. Just say, you know, thanks. Thanks for your patience because you're awesome, Anna. Um, don't don't let people talk down to you ever. Got it? I, you, if, they, if they talk down to you, you can you can tell them to talk to me, okay? And I will set them straight. You don't have to do, oh, and I broke a rubber band. <laughs> yeah, it's something I'm still working on. <laughs> yeah, see, you're good with those pictures. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, oh, I broke another rubber band. <laughs> We're gonna do this one differently. Um, I'm gonna wrap this around and make it extra strong. And I'm gonna do this. Do you think this will work? So if I do this, how do I? Um, see, I'm, I haven't, every, every creative problem is a problem like I've not had before. So like, you know, I'm not apologizing for breaking the rubber bands. Um, but I'm breaking rubber bands and I'm learning something from it that the rubber band needs to be stronger. Don't, don't apologize. But thank you for your patience in watching me deal with rubber bands. 
<laughs> you're awesome. I'm glad you're here. And glad you're recovering from COVID. So hard. My heart goes out to you. Positive healing vibes and all that. What do you like to do in your spare time? Are you, do you uh, do you work or do you are you a student? Are you um, are you an artist like me? What do you what do you do with all your with your time? Well, right now you recover probably, but when you're not recovering, because recovering takes a lot of energy. There we go. Check it. All right. Okay. I like this. I think this is gonna make a good die. What do you think? I'm gluing a little extra at the surface. Do, do, do. X Oof! <laughs> okay, that double tide did not work. We're gonna try this differently. You know what? I'm gonna start with it cut. And then I'm gonna take another one and I'm gonna cut it. Oh, good! Do you have to stop because of COVID or just other things getting in the way? And you like to draw? Oh, good. I love drawing. I like painting. I like drawing. I like doing science. Let's see, here we go. Two, two elastics. That's going to do it. Look at this. I can feel it. Yeah, I, you know, um, I, uh, I'm not right now, but I was a typography professor at the New Hampshire Institute of Art. So I'm technically an art professor. Um, I went to school for biomedical art, so everything with science and, and art, that's my jam. I love science, I love art, here we go, look at this, look at these nice wrinkles, those are going to give such a great pattern, can you see it? I can see it. I can see where it's going to come from. And anything that's thick with the resist like this is going to crack, so that will give a nice texture. I'm going to encourage that cracking a little bit so it gets a nice plant in this. All right. The next step, I'm going to go get a bag so I don't make a mess everywhere and put gloves on. I'm also going to get my bottle of water because I've been talking a lot. I have my bottle. Where did I put it? Here we are. Water is important. Don't forget to drink water. So a bag to dye it in. This one I'll do, as well this one, and some gloves. Because I don't feel like scrubbing my fingernails under hot water today. Gloves are hard to find for a bit around here. I don't know about you. We kind of had a tr struggle for a while, but we've got them now, so that's good. Loves phalanges. Okay. Um, yeah, so follow me on Instagram if you like seeing stuff like this. You can see like excerpts from class when I'm like teaching the little kids. And when some of my other teachers, I have people that work for me doing this too. And when they teach the kids, it's really cute to watch. Sometimes even though I like don't need to be there because they're teaching, I like to just watch and see how adorable they are. Um, I hope my teachers don't mind. Okay, we've got turquoise. It's this turquoise three... 13 by Jacquard Dynaflow. Um, I, it's really, it's designed for silk painting, which I also do, but um, it's just such a great intense paint that just, uh, or dye rather, that just whew, sticks to the fabric real fast. So I'm gonna use that along with this bottle of water and um, throw a bunch of dye in here. What do you think? I think it's gonna work. Oh, narcolepsy. You know, I have narcolepsy too. <laughs> Idiopathic hypersomnia. So does my studio manager. Um, I was not diagnosed in college and that was a challenge. <laughs> are you, are you on Provigil? That, it really helped me. Um, I'm not on it anymore. Uh, Modanafil, Provigil, uh, because it made me really, really anxious. So I've had to sculpt my life around, you know, slow mornings and really, really good bedtimes. Uh, I'm gonna mute again real quick so I can. There we go. That should be a better view. Yeah, so narcolepsy is a thing. One in a thousand people have it. 
uh, it can be a huge challenge and difficult to get through life. Um, a lot of the time, uh, you need to, you know, take care of yourself. And I know that like some, some people's narcolepsy is so bad that they have to like take away their license or they can't drive anymore. Um, which makes sense. It sucks, but it makes sense. You're not the only one in the world with narcolepsy. There are more of us out here. I promise. Um, yeah, we, we exist. I have it too. Um, it's, it's, it's hard. You're going to be okay, but it is hard. Um, I remember the first person I met with narcolepsy, um, was in a different support group for a different medical condition. Um, but she and I were both having a lot of the same problems and that was nice to, to like have someone that has it. Yeah, no, I had my sleep study. I got, you know, one of my, my doctors up here really helped me take care of it. Um, it's, it's a real challenge. Uh, well, now you've met someone who has narcolepsy as well. Uh, it's made my life harder. Like, uh, you know, so I live in Manchester, New Hampshire, which is about an hour outside Boston, like when there's no traffic. And if it weren't for narcolepsy, I probably would have like gone on to work for like pharmaceutical companies or ad companies in Boston, which is a, a big city nearby. Um, so you fall on the floor. I don't have the fall on the floor kind. That's the kind with cataplexy my studio manager does though um and it's been really hard on her she's working to get disability because like this is like the only place she can work yeah that's the cataplexy the par paralysis like from emotional stimuli or stuff like that yeah that's really hard i don't have that um mine is a variety called you you yeah mine is called idiopathic hypersomnia so like any given moment of the day i'm only a few seconds away from rem sleep uh, minutes when I'm well rested. Uh, but uh, my mornings are terrible. My husband has to wake me up with like coffee in bed. Yeah, the cataplexy is, gosh, I, I'm, that's so hard. I don't suffer from that. Um, but, uh, my studio manager does. And I've only, it's only happened like twice that I've surprised her in the studio. So when I, you know, so for those of you who don't know, cataplexy, um, if you're aware of the fainting goats that are really funny on like Instagram and Facebook and stuff, and you like surprise them with an umbrella and they just kind of stiffen up and fall over, that's cataplexy, um, caused by surprise or fear. And any emotional stimuli can do that to a person with narcolepsy. And it can be really hard to live with because obviously you can't work on a factory floor because if something beeps and you didn't expect it to, you could fall over and get run over by a forklift. So that's like a no go. Um, cataplexy is hard, Anna. I'm so sorry you have that. Um, oh man, are, how are the doctors in Brazil for catap you know for cataplexy and narcolepsy? Are you are you able to get treatment? Like what what do you do? Um, did you get a sleep study? What was your mean latency sleep time? MLST. Because uh, that can sometimes tell you stuff. Uh, but the cataplexy, gosh, that is hard, man. My heart goes out to you. Not only did you get COVID, but you got narcolepsy. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Anna. That sounds like a really hard bunch of stuff to deal with. Oh. Yeah. It's good that you're open about it though. Um, you know, you're going to find other people with it as you go on in life. How long have you been diagnosed? Yeah. Good. I'm glad you're going to see a doctor. Did it start because of COVID or did you have it before COVID? Oh, so you're just getting ready to like do sleep studies and stuff where they stick the wires around all over your head and like have you sleep at the hospital. Ugh. I did that. It was like eight years ago now. Something like that. My skin didn't react well to the, um, to the nodes that they put on your head. So I'm adding some water to give it a little bit of a bleed through here. I really want it to not be really stark everywhere. So 
twisting it so that water gets moved around a bit. I don't want to add too much because I don't want the resist to goo back up and wash out. All right, now I'm going to add the dye to this piece. I'm going to put it in the bag so that I don't get dye everywhere. And I'm going to use this turquoise. I'm just going to dump it in. You know what? That has That's hard too. Um, I uh, My husband helps take care of me. Do you have a, like a state person or do you have like a friend or a loved one that takes care of you? Um, cause yeah, it's hard. I, I feel for you so much. Um, my husband does a lot of taking care of me, um, particularly in waking me up in the mornings. Um, that's, that's hard. You have my, my condolences. I don't know. What's the right word? I don't know. I feel for you. That's all I can really say because I feel for you so much. Um, I've gotten to a point where I'm in an okay spot, right? Like I got a, I got a great house. I seem to be able to do a lot. I work out a lot. Sophia adopts you. <laughs> That's great. I'm glad you have someone who can help take care of you. My husband takes care of me. And that's kind of a hard thing, too, when you have a chronic condition like that. You, you know, whoever, you know, loves you, whoever they are, ends up sometimes taking care of you more than they normally would. And that's hard. It's hard to let some of that go, you know? But you have to in order to, like, function. You'll be all right, though. You're proud of him? My husband? Yeah, he does a good job. But I'm living proof that you can still have a life and do things and get stuff done with narcolepsy. People who are recently diagnosed sometimes feel like their lives are over. And it can seem that way at first. But you just, you just like diagnose, like you just learn to build a life around it kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like you can do things. Um, it's just not going to do exactly what you, like your life just isn't going to be exactly what you thought it would be. And that's okay, because there's a lot of non-standard ways of living that are just fine and dandy. But yeah, I can't drive to Boston because I can't make like that hour commute every day. I would fall asleep. I would. Um, we even looked into like maybe, you know, in America we have mostly automatic transmission. But we looked in the manual transmission so that, you know, maybe if I was engaged more as I drove, like, maybe it would be better. Um, and I'd stay awake more. We looked at, like, we looked into so many things. And and ultimately, I ended up starting my own company. Um, and it's built into the carriage house that's attached to our, our house. So I don't have to drive that far. And uh, most of my clients are in the Manchester area. I have some that kind of get close to Boston, but they're not, not that, not that far. You know, not, not all the way to Boston. Not every day. Um, certainly. Here we are. Keep dyeing this, just pouring it in, and then twisting it into the seam so I get that nice, you know, patterned look of tie dye. So glad you're here. <laughs> no, I won't be mad with you if you fall asleep while you're watching me. You're recovering from COVID and you have narcolepsy? No, I'm not going to be upset. I'll know if you just, you know, if it just says you're still there or whatever, but you're like quiet. Mm -mm, no hard feelings. Uh, I remember, so sometimes I, I have to remind the dentist sometimes. I'm like, I might fall asleep in your chair. Um, you know, you're lying down and you're just lying there and you're bored and like falling asleep is a real potential thing. Um, especially the last time I went to the dentist, I'd just done like, I was up for almost 24 hours straight doing a fundraiser for my library. It was really hard. Um, but we did it. We raised a lot of money, which was really cool. Um, but I was dead for like a week and a half afterwards. <laughs> Sometimes I question whether I'm still recovering. Probably not. But, uh, you know, you get the idea. 
No, I will not get upset. Yeah, we'll be uh, s sleep addicts together. Um, <laughs> I, I probably won't fall asleep. I have not yet fallen asleep on camera like this. It's one of the reasons I like to stay standing and working. Um, it really helps me focus and stay awake. Um, even though I have like, I have other health issues too. Like I was in a wheelchair for a bit because of my really bad feet and sometimes it's just pain that makes it so that I can barely function. Um, but yeah, no, if you fall asleep, I have with my studio manager, you know, she's fallen asleep while we were in conversation before. So, um, <laughs> I totally get it. You, yeah, no hard feelings. <laughs> um, you do you and you stay healthy and that's all that matters. As you deal with things like disability like that, you're, you're going to have those challenges, yes. Um, but I, I, you will overcome them. Um, it will be okay. And uh, yeah, it will be okay. Like, don't, don't get down too much. Because the way I like to tell it to people with um, disabilities is just think of them, and you're an artist, so just think of them as like design constraints. And a lot of times you can produce better artwork when you've defined your design constraints um, very, very clearly. So don't, you know, don't knock, don't knock yourself for having a disability or needing help from people. I'm glad you, my stream is making you happy. That makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I'm doing a good job. Um, you know. I mean, I, I guess I kind of have a product to sell and that's my classes and stuff, but it's like human connection and making art and that kind of stuff, you know, like, and to, like, what are the chances that, um, you randomly pop onto my, my stream of all the streams, um, and you, you know, have narcolepsy and I've had a little more experience with it. So now you're going to be better off. Um, like those things happen in life and it's just amazing how they come together. Uh, I'm so glad I can help you. Maybe, <laughs> maybe this will become the narcolepsy stream. Everyone with narcolepsy is going to show up here. <laughs> Cause I've done it. It's not fun. I've been there. You'll be all right. And sometimes with people with narcolepsy randomly get over it. My doctor told me that too. Um, I would say I definitely still have it, even though I'm not medicated for it anymore and stuff. I don't, yeah, it, the medication made me very anxious. So I don't take it um, because I have anxiety and that makes everything harder. Everything. I heard a beep. I want to make sure it's not my husband telling me that I like, uh, I no one can hear me or something. Oh, it was a beep uh, telling us that I'm live. I'm still not used to Twitch doing that, which is cool. Um, aw. Cool. There was an email from, uh, Dean Kamen's assistant. We did a Manchester Library readathon um, to raise money for our library. <laughs> I know I'm so cool. Libraries are really important. We need books, and in something like a pandemic, books are a really great escape. They keep us home um, while giving us stuff to talk about. And libraries in America, at least, perform a lot of essential services type, like giving computer access to people who can't afford computers. Um, that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, that, that, uh, that's important. And because I'm all about educating kids, right? Using art to teach them science. Um, I felt like the library really needed our extra help. Um, so I worked with the library foundation board, which I'm now a member of to raise money for our library. Um, and we did, we, we raised quite a bit of money, which is pretty cool, about $10,000. Um, 
and that's cool. We're going to use it to make more programming and stuff. And actually, the, the, we couldn't record the stream, but that is um, MCL Foundation, MCL underscore Foundation. <laughs> you want to be like me? <laughs> well, you know, being like me comes with a bunch of anxiety, um, menstrual cramps, and, um, well, emotional hangups. <laughs> Let's just go there. <laughs> Here comes my husband. I'm live on Twitch. I've, I've found a friend who has narcolepsy in Brazil. That makes sense. I'm going to get on then. You're going to what? I'm going to get on then. Oh, my husband's going to join us. <laughs> you want to be like me. There are advantages, yes, to being like me, um, but there are some disadvantages too. So don't, you know, don't. You be you, right? Be you. Because being you means you'll be the best at you. Um, and if you're me, what if I'm not the best at being me anymore? <laughs> I want you to be you. <laughs> He's going to pop on. He'll pop on in the chat here. Um, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll get to chat with him. Um, but uh, you're going to be fine. Like, and I'll keep saying that because it feels like as you're trying to figure this health stuff out, especially with like narcolepsy, it feels like you're never going to be okay again. And that life is like never going to be okay again. And um, everything's going to be harder, right? And it will be. Don't get, don't get me wrong. But you're going to find a way through it. Um, if I did it, you can do it. Um, yeah, see, like I have, I have problems with like saying no to people. Um, I have problems with... Um, well, all kinds of things. So you don't want to like, you don't want to just be me. Trust me. Um, I do cool stuff. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, like today, today is a bad pain day. How write your name? Um, well, I'm Amber Nicole. So A-M-B-E-R space N-I-C-O-L-E. And then Unchartered is my company. Um, and that's the logo I designed for it. Yep. My name, I have a dual name because I spent too much time in the South. Um, it's a trope. It's a joke a little bit. And it's not untrue that uh, women in the South, even some men in the South, seem to have two names, like they're Mary Jo or Joanna. Um, and I spent a lot of time in the South as a kid. And my, my best friend's name was Amber. So I started going by Amber Nicole. And, um, you know, it just kind of happened. But yeah, if you're on Instagram, you should follow me on Instagram because I post stuff there too, like all my student work. Um, not my, yeah, this, the work of my students, if that makes sense. Um, I might have, I have fun there too. And sometimes I just pop on live for quick little things or post like, um, we're starting to sell our kits retail at a store downtown. Oh, that reminds me. I think I still have a coffee. Where'd my coffee go? <laughs> um... I lost my coffee. I just got a coffee from the bookery because um, that's where we sell our products. And um, I like their coffee. It's, it was a decaf, don't get me wrong, because part of the narcolepsy is I get the caffeine, just a, you know, just that a really good heavy dose of cold brew coffee in the morning. And then, um, and then I get, and then I get, um, And then I don't take any more caffeine because that's my medication, basically. I got a, I heard, I got a text. So I'm worried that it's like one of my friend listeners. <laughs> my phone just told me my face doesn't match what it usually does. Bummer. <laughs> my husband just told me the coffee is on the baluster downstairs. <laughs> it's on the stairs downstairs. Oops. Um... I love their coffee. It's very good, especially when Benjamin makes it. Um, and he's the general manager there. And Benjamin and I are friends. And he did the fundraiser for the library with me. Um, so we're always, like, trying to plan and work on making the world just a little bit of a better place, um, especially for kids and um, those who need to learn and develop things. Um, so, like, yeah. Like, we, we work together on projects like that around our town. Um because we believe in it um and it's fun to have a friend that works on that with me and um i kind of grew up doing that kind of thing with boards and you know 
running fundraising efforts, so I get to teach Benjamin that stuff. Well, he teaches me how to be better online, because um, he's got some mad skills there. Um, if you follow the bookery on Instagram, you'll you'll see him like dancing and singing on TikTok and stuff, and he does all that. I'm I'm not I'm not good at that stuff. Maybe one day I don't know, but he's really good at, at social media, and he has a good management policies. Yeah, Amber, <laughs> we. But we both want to like treat our employees really good, and we want to make places where um, people want to work and like are taken care of and, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, you know, we, we're learning from each other, which makes it really cool. All right, I've got this soaked, not completely soaked, but at least so there will be some difference in the colors as they move through. Let's go take a look at my uh, color wall here of dyes real quick. I'm going to mute though while I do it so I can move the camera. Here we go. Let's go check out these colors. Now, I was thinking of doing sulfur green because I love the sulfur green. It's going to be really interesting um, with the yellow. So it's going to be like this. What do you think? Is that too gross? I love gross greens. Um, and I look good in gross greens, I think. So let's do some gross green and uh, some 318, some 318, which is the chartreuse. Yeah, some chartreuse. Is it emerald? Where's my 817? Violet, what is Violet doing there? Violet doesn't belong there. Violet goes up here. That must be that. This could be weird. So this must be the teal. What do you think? So this is the 18. So I'm planning on this green with this green and this green. So these three on this yellow. Is that too crazy? You like black and blue on the yellow? I'm doing a black one over there. I, it just needs, I need a tool for it. I need a bigger bucket. Um, because I've got this pink one with the, the purple and reds on it. And then I've got an orange one with reds, oranges, and kind of like a blood color. <laughs> um, but I think I need something in like the greens family for this. I'm just trying to decide, do I do this green first or this green first? Like, I'm not sure the pukey green is right for this all of a sudden. Like putting it up against the neon and it's it's all kinds of wrong, isn't it? Tough to tell on screen. So that means we're gonna man, we're gonna skip puke green. Really, it's called sulfur green. Um, but I like puke green. Okay, so 318, sure. 317. Sorry, I had that twisted around. Does it get better if I do it like that? 317. Uh it needs another color. It needs a third. Should it be the emerald? We're not using you. So 311 and 320. Maybe these four? So we'll get 17, 18. So 17 and 18 and I'll get 19 and 20. 
All right, we'll probably only get to one of the colors on this today because this is going to be like the really super duper like base kind of coat, but I'm, I'm saying it here so that I remember it next time. If I ask and you're watching, um, <laughs> what colors did I say I was going to do? It's the 318, the uh, or 317, 319, and, or I'm saying three, 817, 819, and 820 by Jacquard, the, the Dynaflo colors. Um, and I'm starting out with this 318. Um, I'm going to put those aside here so they don't get dye all over them. Uh, but these are my little, I did all these tests so I knew what the colors were when I actually got on the fabric. Um, we got to shake it because we've got some sediment kind of coming on on the bottom here. Do, 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 do. Shake that up. Shake it all up. Shake. Cool. I'm going to leave that one on its side. Yeah. All right. In the bag goes so that uh, I don't make as much of a mess on my table. My, stu my studio manager, Kai, gave me this green <laughs> measured board. So um, I try to treat it really nice because Kai is, Kai is nice. Kai keeps my head on straight because I'm one of those disorganized creative types and she makes sure I'm less of that. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, she calls herself the studio spider, which is disingenuous to how much she really does around here. Um, her trapdoor spider. We have some trapdoors in the closet for to store s supplies for like long-term stuff. And yeah, she, she goes down in there and stores things and, and pulls it back up. Look at that. Oh, that's going to be lovely. Do you see that coming on? Ooh, that neon is still coming back on. I do have the best friends. I have the most creative, amazing friends. Um, it takes a long time to like develop a, a group of friends that is like that. It's, it's true. Um, I've been living here in New Hampshire about 10 years. Um, so it takes a little time to build a network like that. But once you do, it's amazing. I moved around a lot growing up, like I, so many different places um, by the time I was an adult. So, you know, I uh, have my own, I didn't, you know, I don't have like those childhood friends. Well, I do, see, um, but they're just in different states. So they're like thousands of miles away. Um, like my best friend in Alabama was, was named Amber. Um, so I started going by Amber Nicole, and sometimes she's on here. Um, I won't give away who she is, but she's on here sometimes and watches me do stuff. She's a, uh, a really cool person um, with her own set of health issues. But she still does creative things and paints things and grows beautiful vegetables and gardens, um, just like I do. We're, uh, we're like that. Oh, <laughs> I don't mind saying my age. I'm 35. Um... Yep, I'm 35. I really don't mind saying my age. The 30s are nice. 20s are hard. What's, how old are you? You don't have to say either if you don't want to. But um, it's tough. Like, 30s get better, I would say, than the 20s. Um, 20s, I think you're still, like, kind of figuring out who you are and what you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you do all these things that everyone tells you to do, and then when you're in your 20s, you're like finally doing the things you thought you wanted to, and then you have to discover that it is or isn't actually what you wanted to do, um, which can be hard. Ah, you're 17. Yeah, you you've got a you're gonna be just fine. Like to figure out the narcolepsy at that age, and like oh, you're gonna do so much. You're gonna do so many cool things at that age. Oh, there's so much set up in front of you. You're you're gonna be so cool. Especially figuring out the narcolepsy so much sooner um, than I figured it out. I didn't figure it out until my mid-twenties, so um, count your blessings. I probably had it then, but I was fighting it, you know? And it, it, I was just fighting it all the time, and people didn't understand why I was tired all the time. Even my parents. Because I was getting, like, eight to ten hours of sleep. Like, I was very particular, but I still was tired, like, all the time all the time. All right, we're adding this green in here because me and neon yellow up against my skin is not the best, I'll be honest. I am a natural redhead and my skin and neon yellow don't always mix. So 
we're gonna really push that green into around the neck so that when I wear it it's not so bad yeah you're gonna do great like um, to be aware of yourself and working through your stuff and all that you're gonna do fine to like work through narcolepsy at a young age and figure it all out you're gonna do awesome things Yeah, so like, don't judge yourself compared to what I'm doing, because I'm like twice your age. <laughs> it's okay. Um, like, a lot of my students are in their 17, you know, in their teens and early 20s. So, you know, don't don't be hard on yourself. Like, I think so many people expect themselves to achieve way too much too soon, and it's not good for them. So, don't push yourself. You're gonna be fine. All right, we're gonna set this aside somewhere. Uh, I'm going to put it here. That'll work. Because I think there's some green on the outside. This one got a little messier. And I'm going to wipe all this up. Put my lids back on my colors. Pour some colors into here. Nice. So I can get rid of that medium bottle. Very good because this isn't particularly helpful. I now buy them in much bigger quantities as you can see. Um, uh, I'm going to let that settle a bit. There's some foam in here, and I want that foam to settle before I throw it away to make sure I get all the money I spent on it. Too. I don't paint my nails. Um, it's not that I don't like it. Um, it's that it doesn't stick to my hands. So part of the challenge with all the construction type work that I do on my house is my nails get beat up, my hands all get beat up. And even when I wasn't doing stuff like that, like... They don't stick. The nail polish just doesn't stick to my nails. Um, here we are. Here's my cleaner. I do paint my toenails, though, from time to time. Um, so there's that. Uh, I paint my toenails, and it does stick to my toenails. It just doesn't stick to my fingernails. Why, do you like painting your fingernails? I bet you do. Especially with the time you probably spend in the hospital, you probably do a lot of, like, self-art. I do, um, I do other self art like henna and stuff like that on my hands. I've gotten, because of the narcolepsy, right? We're not moving around when we sleep at night so I can put henna on my hands and just fall asleep with my hands out. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so the henna works for me. But yeah, I, it just doesn't stick to my nails. Like my nails are real thin and flimsy. Um, <laughs> So yeah, look in the henna, like with the narcolepsy, like you could do patterns on your palms and then just lay there and fall asleep and it'd be totally okay. Pro tip, narcolepsy means you can rest long enough without having to think about it and keep still for henna. Um, watch your henna sources, get good henna sources, test it, do a skin test so you don't have an allergic response. But um, <laughs> yeah, henna's real great throw away our trash so that I leave less of a mess for Kai. Um, let's see here. You think I can ask my husband to bring up the coffee so I can finish drinking it? Um, I could also use like more water. I thought I brought my big thing of water up. But I don't see it. Honey, is that downstairs too? <laughs> um... All right, we're gonna let that foam, foam out, pop. Uh, and we're gonna put everything away. Put all my color wheels back. I'm gonna keep my three colors kind of set aside so I remember what they are next week. Move my water back where it belongs so that Kai can find it. And we're just gonna leave these in the bag kind of, you know, where the dye can stay on it, but it can still, ooh, there's stuff on the outside, what do you know? Um, but so that it can like dry. Really want it to, we want it to dry. Um, get some hand wipes. Do you love glitter, Anna? Do you love glitter? Cause I love glitter. Discord, ah, how I enter your Discord, Discord I presume? I don't have one. Should I have one? Uh, maybe I should have one. 
my friend has one and he uses it to show movies on Fridays and then um, talks over them and tells us things and it's funnier that way because <laughs> he knows so much and he gives really great like uh, cultural commentary and stuff. I'm actually thinking of uh, I need to take him out for a coffee and like ask him about um, his opinions on how I'm doing at this because he, he watches it when he can. Um, and he'll give me all kind of feedback. But uh, here, let me give you a bunch of links here in the chat while I'm not covered in dye. How about that? Uh, we'll give you my website. That Cameras just did weird things. Sorry, honey, you're on camera. Oh, he brought me my big water and the rest of my coffee. Oh, okay. Um, okay. You want to show you the baby turtle that you drew. I'm going to allow it. Um, so you're going to send it to me in the chat? And then I'm going to send you to my Instagram. And then my Facebook. still new to this, obviously. What is that? Odd log. Hi, Odd log. Thanks for joining us. I'm glad you're here. We're uh, between projects at the moment. I just finished tie-dyeing some things um, and set them aside. And I just posted links to like my website and stuff um, where you can kind of see what it is I do all day. Uh, my husband just brought me my coffee, which is excellent. It is decaf at this hour. For me, it's in the afternoon. And my, my big water bottle, so I can keep talking. Um, but I sell like kits on my website, so you can sign up for like a series of classes. Um, this one's Stinky Slime, so we use science to learn about non-Newtonian fluids um, and smells and noses and how smells work. And then, um, <laughs> and I sell these kits at the bookery, which is really cool. Or uh, you can sign up for a kit and you get the whole kit. Um, you're a fan of tie-dye, that's awesome. Can you tell? I am too. Um, so those projects are set aside and dying, but what I'm gonna do next is a bag. Um, it's gonna be kind of cool, I think. Um, I should have just gotten some supplies in that will help with this project. So I'm gonna open them. Here's hoping there's nothing embarrassing. Not that there would be. These are all business orders. Let's see here. Ooh, I know what this is. This is for one of my students. Um, ooh, and then black holographic vinyl print because I want to do a black holographic vinyl print for my laptop. <laughs> and um, yeah, some colored pencils for one of my students. Uh, so if they sign up for the Wednesday night class, the kids, um, I put together little kits that will help them develop their artistic skills. Um, it's 50 bucks a month and then if they sign up for the kit they get like 70 bucks worth of supplies every month as well so i there's a, one student in particular who needs prismacolor so i got her a nice prismacolor sharpener and um prismacolor pencil so this is going to savannah uh i'll be sure to send this to her <laughs> let's see what's going into this one Doo -doo -doo. 
because my, my knife is downstairs. Do you use powder or ink? Um, for dyeing, I'm using ink, a, a dye, a, a, a liquid form. I'm not currently using powders for much of anything. I don't like aerosolizing them, and I tend to get them in my eyes, even when I wear eye protection. Um, I have used powdered dyes in the past. I don't like the fact that I have to heat that up. What I'm really using in terms of my dyes is Jacquard's Dynaflow because you don't have to heat it. Um, and it works on, on, on silk, which I do a lot of. Do I get confused when I'm waking up? Yes, big time. I'm very confused when I'm waking up and my hands don't always work right. And sometimes I'm like half awake and paralyzed. So that's fun. I'm very, very, very confused in the morning. You can ask my husband. <laughs> and sometimes if a loud noise wakes me up in the middle of the night, um, which is hard to do because sometimes I don't wake up for alarms. Odd log, if you weren't here earlier and didn't see, um, I have narcolepsy, so I have some challenges. Um, but yes, I am often confused when I wake up, especially when I wake up unexpectedly. Um, I'll scream like when it's a loud noise, I'll just wake up screaming. And it used to happen in college too. Imagine being a college roommate to someone who wakes up screaming. It's great. Or to someone who doesn't wake up to a fire alarm. Ooh, okay. Here's some good supplies. Wait, why do I have two? They were not supposed to send me two. Well, I gotta send it back. Um, oh, I like this. So this is the neoprene cover I was looking at to cover my laptop with, to slip it into my bag. Um, I'm gonna have to test it later to make sure it actually fits my laptop, but this, I wasn't expecting it to be shiny, which means this is just the best thing that's ever happened. <laughs> Um, this is the order. So what is, what, it, what that is, narcolepsy or the order that just came in? <laughs> Cause this is awesome. It's holographic just like this. Oh, it's going to be so cool. Narcolepsy is a, a disease. Um, well, it's an illness, um, sometimes a disability that, um, means you sleep and you sleep more than you need to. Um, and you can't control it. For instance, I slept for three days straight once. Um, and you don't wake up. Sometimes you experience something called cataplexy, which is a paralysis um, uh, with extreme emotion. So you've probably seen videos of like fainting goats where they get surprised like by an umbrella or something else. And they go boing and then they're like stiff and they fall over and they just kind of hold that. That's cataplexy and humans can experience that too. And it's a form, it's a, one of the symptoms of narcolepsy, which means narcolepsy is you sleep a lot. You can, some people have it and they can just like fall asleep in any given moment. Um, emotional stimuli will make them fall asleep really fast. Um, they can just be sitting and fall asleep. I have a particular variant called idiopathic hypersomnia, which means they don't know where it comes from, but I need to sleep a lot. <laughs> so I, I have to have a very structured day. Um, I, I, there are medicines I can take, modanafil, Provigil. I don't take them because they give me a lot of anxiety. Um, so instead I have to sculpt my day around my disability. Uh, which makes a regular job really hard. So um, I don't work for anyone. I actually have my own company. But at the same time, when you have a disability, you don't always view it as a negative. See it as like a design constraint. Like it, your designs end up better when you give yourself rules for your design. And so my life has rules. And among them is I need to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so people with narcolepsy fall asleep and they sleep sometimes in inappropriate places in the middle of the day at work. Um, or, and or they have cataplexy, um, which makes them fall over in paralysis. So I'm not the only one here who has it. My studio manager also has it. She has cataplexy, I don't. Thank goodness, cataplexy would be really hard. All right, you think this one has the wax I ordered? So I ordered some wax because I want to wax my cotton um, bag before I sew it. There we go. I left my knife downstairs. I built this, I took an old GE record player and I turned it into a greenhouse. It's pretty cool. But that means my knife is still downstairs. Not the last. 
is the other laptop case thing I ordered to see which one would be better for my laptop. Okay, good stuff. Um, this one does look like it'll protect it more, but it's not as pretty as the other one. <gasps> I'm gonna have to wait to test them to see which ones fit the best. You have to go, you have to go to work, see me around. Okay, cool, cool. Well, I hope you'll subscribe and come back again, like in the future. Cause like, it'd be cool to have you back. And I'm always happy to answer questions about health stuff like narcolepsy. I'm a biomedical illustrator, which means I have the art and the science. So I'm pretty good at explaining that stuff. Odd log, do a good job at work, okay? Or whatever, or don't. Mm. Coffee. Even when I'm not drinking it for the caffeine, it's amazing. But this is my coffee from the bookery. I get an oat milk decaf latte, iced, because we're getting warm here in New Hampshire, which is nice. It's so good, especially when Benjamin makes it. I feel the friendship. Okay, so I don't have my wax yet. That's fine. It'll come sometime today. But what I do need to kind of think through here is my drawings. I've had a challenge. So I found these jeans. These jeans. <laughs> In an alley, quite literally. Yeah, I found these jeans literally in an alley um, behind my house right there. And uh, they were really good fabric. So they're this Carhartt brand, which is like a, I think it's like a farmery type brand. So like farmers like it. And it, it the pocket had ripped. That was the only problem with them, but they were nice and big. Like they were a big pair of jeans. So um, I'm gonna use this as raw fabric to make a bag out of because I came across the problem of finding a women's bag for a 17 inch laptop. Um, yes, women have big laptops, <laughs> but nobody makes a bag meant for women. So I'm going to make my own. I want it to be waterproof. It doesn't, or you know, water resistant. It doesn't have to be waterproof. I'm not planning on submerging my laptop, but I do want it to handle if there's like a rainstorm and that kind of stuff. So I've been playing with dimensions, designing my bag, and I think this is what I'm settled on right here. Can you see that? Um, I'm going to move the mic and camera here. There we are. So you can see what I'm planning on doing with, uh, with this project. <laughs> can you see it like in two places? That's great. Um, so I'm, what I'm gonna do is the main piece of this right here will be this really nice thick Carhartt denim. Um, it's a fairly light denim, which I guess is in style because we like mom jeans these days. Um, it's really heavy, it's well made. I'm gonna be able to, yeah, I'm gonna be able to work with this and I've got a heavy duty sewing machine. So this is gonna work really well for me. Um, and then along the bottom here, it's going to be a dark jean just to add a little bit of reinforcement along the bottom. And it's going to be like this to give like um, style. It's, it's for style. Style points, really. Got to have style. Um, I really like recycled things. I like reusing things. I think that's important. And so I'm going to probably gonna make the pockets that dark jean as well. And it'll look kind of like this, see? And it'll be dark here. The trouble is though, the lower leg doesn't quite stay nine inches the whole way, um, cause they're tapered. Just a smidge, but enough that it's a challenge. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to fix that. Uh, straps are going to be the hardest thing to make on this bag, but fortunately I found uh, a brand of photography equipment, uh, technical photography equipment that sells bags. Um, yeah. So, Anna, I think you were trying to send me a picture of your, your turtle, but I don't know that it came through. I tried to allow it. Um, 
If you want to try again, I would like to see the turtle you drew. I like turtles. Um, so I think I'm good. So to, to make up for the fact that the bag is slowly going to get narrower at the top, which is fine because it means the bag will hold up and stand up straight um, with this really, really super gradual taper here. Um, I'm going to have to open it back up again, and I'm overemphasizing it in my drawing, with adding a V right here um, so that things go in and out of the bag easier. You know what I mean? Um, and I've got some cotton uh, canvas webbing coming in. I was going to use climbers webbing, but I decided it's going to be a lot harder to sew through, and I don't know that I'm going to need it to be like... 500 pounds of durability. So um, I'm not planning on putting 500 pounds on my back <laughs> with two straps. So technically, I guess a thousand pounds. Yeah, we don't need that. Uh, cotton webbing will work just fine and it'll look better style wise. Uh, so this is basically what the bag is going to be. Um, oh, and then the flap that goes over the laptop insert is going to be the same dark color as the bottom of the bag and the insert on the V here. So, <laughs> it all goes according to plan. This could bomb totally, you guys. I really know. I have not made a bag before. Um, I've dyed a bag. I put my logo on a bag. But I've not made one from scratch, especially not from reclaimed fabric, which is what I'm doing here. So, the problem is these jean pieces aren't perfectly straight. If you take a look, you see that the crotches fold out. See that? Um, so this right here is the widest point of the jean. Um, and that gives me, I think I measured it out at 58 inches when cut, you know, when, when drawn apart squarely like this. And then to go 30 inches above, which will give me within the TSA regu regulation, so it can be a carry-on item, um, it brings it up if we measure this. Uh, so at 30 inches it gives me just a little bit to roll down on the top so it can be a rolled top bag <sighs> it's gonna be a challenge and then so the widest part at the top here is 20 inches it just might work because I need the widest part based on my drawing here to be at least 14 inches does that make sense? So with 20 in the front, 20 in the back, I think we're going to make that. The hard part is, though, then I don't have the sides. So I, uh, I cheated and I bought something because these dark, these dark jeans that I have lying around that were ripped are much thinner. And they're going to work for accent pieces and to like improve the durability and stuff. Like you can't even see um, all the, the details on these jeans. There's even some paint splatters because these are my jeans for a bit. Um, they're too thin to do what I want and they have a little bit of too much stretch in them. So I went to Goodwill and, um, doo -doo -doo. and I bought another pair of very similar jeans. They're a little darker, similar size. Um, these are by Wrangler. They should be pretty durable, pretty stiff. They were even half off, like I specifically looked for the half off, so they were $3. Um, so I don't feel bad about that purchase. Um, it was the first time I've been in a clothing store since the pandemic because I'm compromised. I went in, I went out, got the jeans. Someone came in without a mask. Our governor lifted our mask mandate for the whole um, state, but businesses are still requiring them. and. Uh, it was really awesome because the the person, the manager, like called the person out and was like, put your mask on. And the guy was like, but the governor left it. And he's like, no, it's a private store, put your mask on. So that was really cool. And the guy that did that happened to be the guy that checked me out. So I just, I thanked him profusely and tried to be super kind. Um, because, yeah, masks, keep wearing the mask, people. It's the only way we're gonna slow the spread is by wearing masks. Um, I need my seam ripper because I'm going to start tearing apart these jeans so I can get some good measurements. Do, I 
did just have it out. Put my dies back. I'm going to mute this and lift it up so you can see me moving around the studio. As I get everything ready. Um, I had my seam ripper. See, here's the band that I ripped out of those other jeans. It's pretty cool. Seam ripper. I found it. Found my seam ripper. Coolness. I'm going to put my sketch aside. You can tell I already got green dye on it, so we want to keep the damage to that minimum. Um, but I'm going to, I guess, show you how to rip some seams. How's that sound? Uh, wow, these are in great shape. Look, there's like no fraying. It's almost a shame to take these apart. Um, almost. But look at this. This is going to be a nice contrast denim. See? Nice. A little bit of light, a little bit of dark. Just a little, enough difference to tell that they are different jeans. I like it. Oh, I forgot. I found a tulip on the sidewalk today. Isn't it pretty? I didn't pick this. I don't pick flowers out of people's yards. But it's very pretty. I wore it in my hair as long as I could. So to rip a seam, so I'm going to rip this seam. The cool thing about, ooh, this one has a top stitch on it. That is nice. That must be a Wrangler type. Uh, I'm going to mute that before I move it. This must be a Wrangler type product quality thing on the inside. The top stitch keeps that inside seam laying real flat so it doesn't rub. That's nice. Go Wrangler. Um, but I want to rip the inseam. Ah, oh, here we are. Okay, here we are. I want to rip the inseam first to get my measurements. Uh, to do that, but that inseam is really well made. Do you see how well made these are? Oh my gosh, I'm proud of these. Whoever put these together, good job. Um, so we're going to take it here. Now, I'm not going to undo this yet because I might want to keep that edge. I like this kind of, I think of it as looking like water ripples. I'm going to hold on to that for a bit. But you take your pointy end of your seam ripper and you kind of just stab it down in there, keeping your fingers out of the way, and try to rip that seam and just kind of slide it along. Now, you don't want to always slide with that pointy side in because it will poke through fabrics, especially delicate fabrics. Denim, and for a reclamation project like this, it's not such a big deal. Um, there we go. Give it a couple inches on either side to make my job easier. Ah, look at that. That looks real good. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, and see, I'm looking for that seam right there, and I need to rip that out. And once you have that started, you go and you put the ball end in, and you rip along. And that will hopefully reduce the amount of times you poke your, your, uh, seam ripper through. Um, here we are. Yep, so we got to take out that top stitch first. I'm going to turn these jeans inside out to make my job a little easier. These are some narrow leg jeans. And then, um, and then we'll take the rest of the seam out. These are so well made. I'm going to start looking at Wrangler jeans. They're heavy though. Well, up here in New Hampshire where it gets so cold, heavy is nice. Heavy can be very nice. God, these are like they were never worn. I'm sorry, jeans. You didn't even have a good life to go with. Like, look at that. The, the, it's not worn at all. I don't think anyone wore these ever. Um, it's almost a shame, but they were three bucks. <laughs> so they're mine now, and I can do whatever I want with them. So I'm going to take this seam ripper, and if I do this well, it's probably not going to get done well because I'm doing it live on video. You just all the way up. Look at that. Nice job. One go. Let's do it on the other side too. Hi, did you fall asleep? It's okay if you did. <laughs> So I'm seam ripping, and I'm trying to demonstrate how to do it without hurting yourself and hurting your fabric. And uh, yeah, so you start out with that pointy end going into the seams. And I don't want to undo all the seams, all the hem around the bottom edge of the pants because I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to handle that yet. I want to see when it all comes together what I'm going to do. 
Um, so I'm just trying to do a couple inches on either side, enough that I can unfold it. You don't have to, what did I tell you about apologizing, Anna? You do not have to apologize for a medical condition, one, or for like needing patience. Like, I, don't do that. Don't do that. You are better than that. And the, the, if, if you need, if you feel the need to say something, you can say thank you for your patience. Um, don't say I'm sorry because it puts you in that subservient position compared to other people. Um, don't do it. You're better. You can. You you don't have to do that. Okay. You don't have to apologize to me for falling asleep. Heaven knows I've done it. <laughs> right? Like. For reals. Don't, don't apologize to me, okay, Anna? I do not accept your apology because I don't think you need to give it. You are a strong individual who just has some health challenges. Um, a lot of people do. I have health challenges. I'm going through some right now that aren't related to narcolepsy that are really bothering me. But I'm having a good day. Last night, they, I woke up in so much pain that, and I had to take an extra high dose of Advil. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. We're going to do it. You would try. Good. That's all I can ask. We're going to rip through the whole seam again. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> I love it when it goes that well. Um... But, uh, yeah, you don't have to apologize to me for anything. Um, I mean, you didn't even call me late to dinner. Heaven knows I've been late to dinner before. Um, there we are. That's what my grandma always said. You can call me anything you want as long as you don't call me late to dinner. Usually she's the one making the dinner, so... <laughs> it's funny. All right. So we have that, that top stitch totally pulled off. So now, so you can see that. So that top stitch gave it that. See that? Um, it, it kept that in. So now we've got that loose. So now I need to do that seam. Doing that seam from this side is going to be hard because it's surged. This, these are a really well-made pair of jeans. Um, a serger is a specific type of sewing machine that over edges. So it's over edge mach machine or a serger. It cuts and then sews at the same time. So it gets some really precision type sewing and it prevents some of this fraying that sometimes happens in jeans um, and is super important. I have an over edge machine. It's louder and bigger than my usual machine. Um, but you can do so much with one um, that you, you, you can do, but not as well with the regular machine. All right, all right, I'm happy with this. This is looking good. See that? We've got that little bit of extra stretch. Um, that's so hard, Anna. That's so hard. I'm sorry, Anna. Don't listen to your sister. You're not useless. There are lots of ways people with disabilities can contribute to society. Um, I don't know what the mental health situation is in, in Brazil, but I hope you can find a therapist to talk to about the mean things your sister says. Um, that's, uh, don't listen to her. Um, I know that's really hard. I know that's really hard. I'm sorry, Anna. Don't don't let it stay in your head. Easier said than done. Um, you, next time she says that, you can tell her that Amber Nicole at Uncharted Tutoring says you're wrong. Um, you can send her to my website and be like, see, she's awesome. And if she thinks I'm awesome, I must be awesome. You know what? That's true. Anna, you are awesome. Yesterday, one of my favorite authors, Shannon Mayer, who I worked with, on the library readathon called me awesome and it made my day so anna curry you are awesome and i hope that makes your day because you shouldn't listen to people who tell you those kinds of things their opinion you probably have things that you don't have to tell me about um that you disagree that your sister does um and only easier said than done i'm no good at this but only like listen to people's opinion of who you are and what you're doing if you admire them. If you don't admire your sister, don't listen to her opinion. Okay? Um, I'm not good at it. 
I all the time internalize that terrible stuff that maybe someone said to me offhandedly, accidentally, or something like that. And um, Anna, you're awesome. So internalize that and don't think about what your sister says. Yeah, you know what? It sucks to have a disability, but narcolepsy, it's just like any other disability, like needing a wheelchair or something else. Look at that. Do you see that? It opened up. Doesn't it look good? Nice and open. Now we have that one last seam to do. These are well-made jeans. They've got four, four different things holding the insides together. Um, but like narcolepsy is a disability just like any other. Um, and it's just a chemical imbalance in your brain. And you wouldn't tell a person in a wheelchair that they were worthless because they had a wheelchair, would you? That's just wrong. You wouldn't tell someone who's missing an arm because they served their country that they're worthless. You wouldn't tell someone who's missing a f foot because it didn't work right or, they, or, or someone who's missing an organ because they were born without it that they're worthless. <laughs> Can you say sorry for auto mod? Um, I'm not sure what you're asking. Oh, the auto mod um, asked about hope I die. Yeah, well, I wanted to keep this. I, I want to keep the channel child friendly because I have like young students who could be watching. But I, I think that um, knowing your mental status is important to the things I say to you. So I, I let it. Um, uh, be a little uptight, but then I allowed it because I'm trying to have a conversation with you and make sure you get into a good place. Um, because, you know, don't, don't let people tell you, you can't do things. It's so much easier said than done. Believe me. I know. Um, but like I had this, um, and you don't have to apologize for the auto mod either, by the way, because I turn on the auto mod super secret. I turn on the auto mod. Um, you don't have to apologize for that. <laughs> um, but like, oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't get the picture of the turtle. I don't know how that works on Twitch yet, but if you wanted to send me the picture of the turtle, uh, try again, I think. Um, Anna, I think I, I may have mentioned that while you fell, when you fell asleep. Um, which is totally fine. Don't apologize for it. Uh, but I, I do want to see your drawing. That would be great. You want to watch all my streams? Well, then you just have to sign on when I sign on. So I, I, I'll always stream on Wednesdays um, at 2.30. Um, the time may have to change as different schedules of classes and stuff change. And then sometimes I'll randomly pop on when I'm just working on something else, right? Because this bag is not going to get done if I only work on it on Wednesdays at 2.30. So I'll probably work on it more times. Um, I know I won't be on streams uh, between 4 and 5 on Monday and Tuesday um, or between 2.30 and 4 on Thursdays because I teach classes then um, or between like 6, 6 and 7 on Wednesdays or Fridays. Okay. Yeah, yeah create an Instagram and send it to me because I'd love to see it. And then you can follow me on Instagram and I'll follow you back and then you can show me all your drawings. Um, I'd like that. Okay, so we got this leg completely apart. Do you see this? It is completely open. Uh, now I'm going to do the other leg. Only because it's easier to just do it right now than measure one leg and assume that those measurements transition to the other leg. They probably do. But... Uh, it is 4.50 for me right now. Um, I am on East Coast time in New Hampshire. I am on East Coast time. So yeah, so all those times I just said uh, shift like, if it's five for you, go one hour back. <laughs> um, so I teach classes to, you know, students at the hours where I said I wouldn't be available. Um, other than that, I, I imagine I'll be on Twitch quite a bit working on this bag. So, I guess that means you're not near the coast in Brazil, huh? Bummer, I love the beach. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> it even had a good sound. Did you hear that? <laughs> totally got that seam all in one go. That was nice. It was very nice. I love little achievements like that. All right, we're going to get this seam started because these Wrangler jeans are made really well. I'm sorry, Wrangler. I'm taking apart a product I don't think anyone ever wore um, for its denim because it was three bucks. And I don't think I'm going to get a nice denim for three bucks a yard. Um, I don't know, someone could have worn it like once. Oh man, what if it, oh, I just had a bad thought. What if it was someone that died that gave these up? You were born in Russia. Ah, was it Dosvidanya? Um, wait, so do you speak, do you speak Russian, Portuguese and English? And you're like worried that you're not awesome? <laughs> Goodness gracious. My dad, I, 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 uh, my dad spent some time in Russia. He, he, he minored in Russian literature. What part of Russia are you from? My families are immigrants to the United States. We're from, we're from Germany. Um, what are the Russian words? Oh, my name. My name translates because it's a stone. So my name is like Yantara in Russian, if you know Russian. Um, and then kartoffel, kartoffelin, kartoffel, I think it's potato. That's the extent of my Russian. <laughs> um, let's see, you weren't born in Brazil, you were born in Russia. I wasn't born in New Hampshire. I mean, I was born in the United States. Um, but not New Hampshire. I was born in uh, New Mexico. Novosibris. Novosibrisk. Is that where you're from? Where you were born? Novosibrisk. So, and my name in German is Berenstein. You know, like the Berenstein Bears. <laughs> Yantara. Amber, um, faux pas, I think, in Cantonese. Uh, because my name is a stone, uh, it translates. Not every name does, right? Ah, so you, you, do you speak Russian at all? You left Russia when you were four? No, oh, so that wasn't, I mean, for you that was a long time ago. All right, so these jeans are apart on the insides. So it's almost a skirt, can you see that? Doo -doo -doo. So we got lots of fabric, and I'm gonna measure this to get a better idea now of how much fabric I have available to myself. This is gonna be awesome. Oh, these look wider. I don't know that they are though. We'll find out. Where's my measuring tape? Oh, I've got string all around me. Here's my measuring tape. Uh, I don't remember deleting a message. I didn't delete that. Interesting. I don't know what's going on. It says I deleted a stream. I don't know. I'm still learning. So the widest point of these pants are at 30 inches. So they are bigger than the other pair I have. Um, because the other pair, are, the widest point is at 28. And this is decidedly 30 inches. So that means I can make this bag 60 by like... 58 if I needed to. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, to do pull all these strings. You only know the bad words. <laughs> 
well, if all your sister can teach you in Russian is self-depreciation and bad words, um, what use is she? No, um, you know, be kind to your sibling, whatever. She probably has her own reasons for thinking mean thoughts about other people. But you don't have to listen to her. <laughs> you only know the bad words. <laughs> All right. So let's check out the what's the width at the bottom of these jeans now. So I can know how wide and narrow the bag is going to get. Because I want the bag to be a little bit wider at the bottom. So that it holds that way. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. We got a good 19 inches. Mmm. We still love her. Yeah, even when family doesn't treat us the best, we still love her. We still love them. I have that problem too sometimes. Did she move away or is it because of COVID you can't see her? All right. Put nine inches. Let's measure this again. It's almost nine inches on the pant leg. Ooh, buddy. The wide. Okay, so the back panel on these jeans, the darker jeans, is nine inches. Oh, <laughs> she's in jail. Yeah, don't listen to what she says. Yep. Don't don't listen to what she says. I uh I don't want to judge her. I'm sure she had a, a tough reason to be in jail. Um, but uh, you listen to me. You're awesome. You're working hard. You speak like two languages. You're, I don't speak two languages. Like I can dabble in German. Um, so, you know, you're already more awesome than I am. All right. So I'm taking a look at this. So this panel Let's see, what, the Wrangler. We're gonna call this panel the Wrangler. The front panel and the back panel we're gonna do with the Carhartt jean. Let's make a note of that, Carhartt. And this, the bottom dark, will be with my do to do where that really dark jean go? There it is. Um, my Levi. What is this? Yeah, my Levi's. Um, because uh, it's hard to see on camera, but these were extra longs, and um, I do not have extra long legs. I have a 32 inch inseam, so I rolled them up and did an invisible seam, basically, um, where I tucked these under and sewed them up so that they'd be the right length for me. And uh, since they ripped, I've undone that. But I have this really cool pattern now that's developed. And I want to use that pattern on my bag um, because of the use. So that's that's where this is going to be. So this is going to be the, um, what did I just call Levi's. Levi jeans. And then this pocket, I'm not sure which one that's going to be yet. But I can wait just a second to make that decision. Um... All right, I think the next step is gonna to be to square off some of this fabric. I think. Actually, the next step, I'm gonna seam rip. We should write these steps out so that as I plan through this. We are going to, one, seam rip the Carhartt uh, 10 inch side. And then I'm going to cut, nope, not the car hurts, the Wranglers. The Wranglers need to be cut. Where'd I put my eraser? Pull out my, uh, my black wing pencil. It's really my favorite pencil. It was in here earlier. Did I put it in my apron? <laughs> entirely possible or maybe I dropped it at the doctor's office that would be awful I have more this will work for now um, C 
seam rip wranglers. And then um, cut, cut the car hearts. And then then what do I do? Can I see Toby? I don't know. Something came in with like three stars. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Sorry, I'm still kind of new to this Twitch thing. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Is Toby the turtle? I like that name for a turtle. Toby the turtle. Um, okay. Seam rip wranglers. Cut car hearts. Um, then I'm going to make the insert, laptop insert, on the car hearts. Along with the flap. Uh, laptop. Uh, pocket. And flap. Cut that. Yeah, it didn't come through. Um, maybe I have settings I need to adjust. Uh... Uh, can you tell I'm new? It's okay. Um, thanks for your patience. Here we go. Settings? Chat settings. Okay. Uh, so pop out chat, scroll. No, uh, not, not that chat setting. Chat appearance. I don't... I don't want to show my show my I don't know. Um, I will research that. I'm going to add that to my to do list that I'm going to research about sending images in my chat. <laughs> That's going in my to do list. Thank you for giving me something new to learn today. Well, if you if you make an Instagram account and follow me, I'll take a look at it. It probably won't be live here, but at another time. Which which also brings me to like I think I've only got about an hour left of broadcasting today because um I have to I have a class to teach at six o'clock tonight for kids. Um, right, double checking my schedule, my schedule, yep, uh, I have a class to teach at six, so I have one more hour left of this, but I'm, it's going strong, I'm loving talking to people here like Anna, um, so I'm going to stay on for that time, uh, laptop pocket and flap, uh, pockets should probably seam rip all the pockets. And actually I'm going to move that up to probably 1.5. And then I need to cut the bottoms. Yeah, even that's been moderated. Well, here, if you are you are you are you on Instagram? Did you follow me on Instagram? I'll look at it here. <laughs> You're doing great, Anna. 
I must have like all links turned off in chat. I know I clicked that link because I'm, I'm new to this and I want it to be friendly for kids, so I didn't allow links. That one I know how to fix when I'm offline. Um, I don't see any any new followers or anything. But yeah, make an Instagram and then follow me. Well, an H bucket list just started following me, but I don't think that's you. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, go on Instagram and then follow me on Chartered Tutoring and I'll see it there, okay? And and then maybe we'll see, maybe I'll, I'll put it up on the screen if I can figure out how to do that. <laughs> Um, move the pockets, cut bottom, I'm gonna have to cut the bottom out of the Carhartts, no, out of the Wranglers. Um, and then I'm gonna have to wax, wax everything. I, I I hope to do the waxing process here on Twitch so that you guys can see what it's like. I may have to, before the waxing step, uh, surge the edges so it doesn't fray. We'll have to, I'll have to think about that. Wax everything. Uh, so the cylinder So the webbing, oh no, uh, so, so back webbing. Then sew the cylinder, then sew, <laughs> thank you, Anna, I love you too. You need to hear that. It's all good, okay? Everything's gonna be fine. And thank you. I uh, I will have an adorable night. I hope you have one too. And I hope you have one with more positive self-talk. I struggle with that too. My inside voice inside my head is not kind to me. So thank you. Your positive words mean a lot. It's true. So, so the back webbing, so cylinder, So the bottom, yep, so the bottom. Then I'm gonna sew on straps, other webbing, outside webbing, or strap webbing. Uh, what do you wanna call that? It goes around to the front. Latch webbing, latch webbing. At some point, you gotta sew the pocket, which might be sew the back webbing and pocket. Both pockets, probably. <laughs> You're allowed to want to be like me, definitely. Um, I just, you know, I want you to be you, too. Like, don't knock your awesomeness and your ability to speak two languages. Like. So maybe you'll be a, like me, but a multilingual me. Maybe you'll do the same thing. Go for it. I would encourage it. Imagine how many more viewers you could reach if you could do your channel in English and Portuguese. <laughs> You're good. Don't worry. I, I, I really look forward to having you back. And be sure to rest all you need, okay? All right, so I think I figured out the steps I'm gonna use right here. Um, this is gonna be so interesting. We're gonna seam rip Carhartts, or seam rip the Wranglers and the, the Levi's. So I can get all the pieces out of them I need. So give me Wait, which one am I seam ripping? I just said Wranglers and Levi's. So we're gonna seam rip. Oh, that's the Carhartts. Here's the, the Wranglers. <laughs> I 
Here we are. We're gonna seam rip this. Now this is a different seam, and jeans do this cool thing where they kind of uh, make a um, a seam that does this, and then they top, they stitch kind of like where my knuckles are. You see that? So they end up with two stitches, and it's stitched like this. It means the the fraying is stopped and it's extra strong okay it's a really I, I bet they have an automatic machine that does it to do it by hand i find challenging but i'm going to tear up all that hard work right now um first by getting under the seam right here and i look for that that piece that i gotta slip under oh, that was the fabric i pierced not the the thread and um there we go so i've got it open just a smidge I'm going to do it again. Whoop, see, it pokes through sometimes. See, and that's okay. You make mistakes. One of the reasons I wanted all denim was so that it would look like worn out and stuff. But, um, <laughs> these jeans don't look worn out at all. I mean, they've got the wash to them, like gives them that, that whatever, but still, it's kind of funny. So to keep from having it, that stabbed through the seam ripper stabbed through you know you just kind of run this in through here with that ball side um it's you got to start with the pointy end though <laughs> got to get it in there somehow and uh unravel that see and i love i just love this texture that happens when you unravel um denim like this you can even um <laughs> i've got string like stringing across the space <laughs> Um, maybe I should pull that off before it knocks my cleaner down. Um, where's my pin cushion? Uh, my pin cushion is an old pair of, um, jean, like, materials. Uh, that I, I, when I, tr I, I hemmed some pants and I just, it, I was just beginning to sew, so I didn't have a pin cushion yet. So I just took my first scraps of oh, here it is. So I took my first scraps of fabric and made my pin cushion. <laughs> See, I love that pattern that kind of develops right here. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I um, I turned into a pin cushion. Is this the best form for a pin cushion? No, but I haven't really sat down and made a new one. Um, but it works, okay? Like, don't knock what works. <laughs> Uh, here we are back to the seam ripping so I love the it just reminds me of water that's why I like it uh, and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna cut these seams I'm gonna go from the inside get it started get that ball in there there we go look at that see okay so we're gonna undo the seam. And you can already see. Do, do, do. I love it. It's going, it's going, it's going, go, go. Ooh! Nice seam rip. Really great seam rip. Yeah, I don't think anyone ever wore these. It's a shame. They're a good pair of jeans. And they're dying today because I am killing them. All right, now we're gonna do that other side. See that other seam? So they do this, the golden top stitch that's so common on jeans. And if you get up in there, See, look at that. Now I get the ball in there so I don't poke holes. And I'm going to do my best not to unfold it as I seam rip because I'm going to show you that really cool fold that, uh, that jeans do. It's a good seam rip. It's a great seam rip. Oh yeah, I love it when a seam rip goes this well. All right, so let's unfold that seam so you can really see what I'm talking about. So 
if we unfold it, do you see this, how it kind of, it folds into that? It's hard to see in the dark. I'm trying to see which, which screen shows it better, but it folds in. See that? It's tucked under right here. This one tucks under here. Can you see that? And then it's rolled. I don't know what it's called, actually. I'm sure Sewing with Nancy probably said it, <laughs> that PBS show here in the U.S. that um, my mother used to watch. I was homeschooled, um, so I got to watch everything my mother did, and Sewing with Nancy was one of those things. Uh, I mean, Nancy knew a lot about sewing, but was really boring and really calm, and her nails were just too perfect for me. It makes sense because she was like on television, like sewing, and the cameras were all focused on her hands. But you notice my hands are not perfect. They're dyed different colors. There's dye on my arms. And I think that's how life should be. We don't need to be perfect. I do put on my makeup though for this. No one should feel like they have to though. My makeup is kind of like my armor, I guess, in a certain extent. Okay, so this is gonna be hard. <laughs> a rivet. Um, The last rivet I removed was in metal. It was in an LED light and I had to drill through it. Now this is brass and not aluminum. It was, I'm gonna guess it's like some kind of a press fit. Nope, I don't have brute strength for it. Nice test. Nope, it might have to come cut out. I might have to cut that out. Um, well, if we can make it a little easier by removing a few more of the seams, maybe I'll be able to pull it further. That is a good rivet. Look at how thick that is. It's a nice rivet. It really is. I almost feel bad about taking these jeans apart. <laughs> can you tell? <laughs> um, they're just it's such a nice set of denim. Look at this. It's so nice. Um, while we think about that, I'm going to rip open the next pant leg so you can see that seam process again. Um, if you're, if you're liking this, you know, do follow me. Uh, I like followers and it lets me know that you guys actually want to, you all, not all guys, want to see this. Um, I am usually spending my days doing this. I'm just not doing it on camera then. Um, so the more followers I get, I guess the more time I'll spend live showing you what I do all day. Um, I don't know. What's my end goal for this? I don't know. Get more creativity in the world so you guys do stuff. I don't know why I'm doing this. Um, it just seemed like the right thing to do. <laughs> um, but do like follow me <laughs> if you, uh, if you're liking what I'm doing and I'll, I'll put up more streams, I guess. Um, I'm going to start hiring soon too. So if you're in the New England, New Hampshire area, you know, keep your eyes open for that. Oh, I'm putting holes in this here. Use the ball side. Got to remember to use the ball side. Okay. We're going to go up this outside seam from the inside. Just like that from the ball side. There we go because oh nice it's going it's going that's a good seam rip oh i love it when the seam rips that smoothly especially when you're working with such a dense fabric like a heavy weave like canvas or denim it's so much easier to rip seams when you're working with silk you have to like pull each seam individually and it takes forever i hate seam ripping usually um oh that one that one went too easy i thought i went through the fabric there for a second um do, 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 all the way up to the pocket to that same rivet that I'm gonna have to think really hard about. I may not even have to worry about it. Like I may be cutting the jeans before that point anyways. But um Yeah, you know. What is? There we go. Can you see that? As I'm ripping through all the way up to that rivet. Now we're gonna do the other side.
and I do, I'm, I only have about 30 to 45 more minutes uh, left of me being able to do this, but I will stay on to that time, but I've got a class to teach tonight. Um, this one's my kids fine arts class. So if like kids are like really into art and like drawing, it's a good class for them. It's the kids safe space. On Fridays, I do an adult class um, that you can sign up for. It's 50 bucks a month. And I like give you individualized feedback on whatever art you're working on. And um, there we go. Nice seam ripping. And I like give you, uh, if you sign up for the kits, I like send you tools that based on what you're doing and what you're working on are going to really help you out based on my, you know, 30 years experience of drawing. Um, I'm a very good artist. You can check out my personal artwork at biosicreative.com. Um, that's that's my like my artwork. Uncharted is where I do all the teaching stuff, just like this, but I'm getting paid for it. Um, I also teach like box classes, like you know you can get an art kit in the mail like this, and I'll teach you how to do stuff. Usually you'll end up learning a little bit of science. Um, I can't help it. I'm a biomedical artist, so I just got to slip the science in there. So here we are. It's that seam. And when you pull it apart, you get that rolled bit. See how it's it's rolled in here? So hard to see in the darkness, right? But it rolls into that seam. It makes a really nice, you know, essentially it's like one, two, three, four, almost five pieces of denim here. So that makes it extra strong, which you want in a jean. All right, nice. So now we have these four different leg pieces of fabric and we decided I need to also seam up the Levi's one more time. These were my favorite pair of jeans and then they, the chub rub on my legs wore them out in the inner seam. They, they're, they're on the thin side too. They're not as strong as these other ones. But um, yeah, look at that. Uh, so that's what inspired me to make this bag. Ultimately, they're not strong enough um, to make the bag. But uh, the, the jeans that I found in the alley behind my house were. So I'm, I'm making the bag out of that, and then I'll be using these as, as detail. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, the thinner fabric is a little harder to seam rip, and the the dark thread on the dark fabric is hard to see. Whereas the the Carhartts had that gold fabric, right? That made it so much easier to seam rip. You hear that, Carhart? Uh, thank you for doing your jeans and contrasting threads so that I can seam rip them later. <laughs> um, There we go. And uh, yeah, look at that. Oh, I love that watery look. It's so cute. Surely you think it's cute too. And actually this one I will probably seam rip all the way over um, because I'm going to use this as a decorative element, just like on my pin cushion that I showed you earlier on this bag since I had rolled them up to wear them, right? Like the, the edge didn't get worn out, so I can do that. Yep, these are harder to seam rip. You see that, how it's going in like an inch at a time? It's a challenge. This is what seam ripping is normally like. Now you understand my excitement over those big long rips. And that felt like I went in through some fabric. I don't see it, but felt like it. So, you know, the trick is if you want to get really thick jeans, the thickest, strongest jeans are going to be, you know, 100% cotton. They're going to feel thick and they're probably going to be super dark blue. If they're not, or at least a solid blue, like if you get that darkness in the seams that isn't anywhere else, then it means they've probably done something to artificially wear them, like to wear them out. And that usually results in a thinner jean material too. If you want jeans that last forever, get 100% cotton and um, darkest blue you can. And that'll that'll do stuff. <laughs> that'll do something to you. Uh, so I've got a little hole I must have made here when seam ripping earlier. 
Bummer. Oh, come on. There we go. Get the ball in there so I don't make more holes. These are much harder to seam rip. I can feel like each and every stitch rather than a nice train of stitches being undone. Nice, look at that. See, it has that like watery texture. I just love that. Do you see that? Isn't it beautiful? You may not see it. There may not be enough contrast here to see it, but I just love it. So we're gonna use it as a design element in my bag. Nicely done. And since this will just be like a decorative cover, well, it won't be decorative. It'll thicken the fabric on the bottom of my bag so it'll last longer. Um, but it's not gonna be like super structural. It's just kind of a protective element. Um, because of that, I don't have to worry about the fact that there are bigger holes. Like I can see light through them if I hold them up to my light. I can see the holes. Um, I don't have to worry about that because I am gonna wax this and the waxing will make it water resistant. Oh yeah, that was a good one. That was a great one. And we have the rivet problem up here too. All right, I'm concentrating, can you tell? <laughs> I'm talking less. Oh, why isn't that seam going? Put the ball in there and then slide it up. So I have magnets. The, the surface I work on is a, is a flat file and I have magnets on it to help hold stuff down and around and these jeans are sticking to it, which means the rivets or the zipper or whatever is. Um, that's why it's so much harder. So the pocket uh, sews into here, so there must be some additional stitching going on. So I'm running the pointy end into the seam. Ooh. Was that thunder? I think I just heard thunder. Oh man, am I gonna miss the thunderstorm when I'm teaching? Oh no, what if the internet goes out while I'm teaching? Um. Yeah, so like, I like thunderstorms, especially the earlier ones in the year, um, you know, when it's nice and warm. I love summer storms where you can stand out in it for the first time. It just is so refreshing. Um, I remember when the first ones, right when the lockdown happened, um, and it was like the first time I left the yard without a mask on because the humidity and moisture in the air meant the air was probably safe to, to like explore without a mask on. It was nice. My husband took pictures of me in the yard just standing there letting it rain on me. It was it was a nice feeling. Reminded me a little bit of the time we got caught in the rain in Belize. That time though, we almost ended up on the other side of the river and couldn't get back to the, the lodge we were staying at. <laughs> almost stayed with the, the locals on that side of the river. The, got to watch the kids trying to get home in it um, and their school bus that could not cross the river um, because the river got so high, we almost couldn't cross the river either. Um, it ended up fine. We all ended up back where we were. Kids like made a chain to get themselves across. It was kind of terrifying, honestly. I was a little worried. Um, I think we saw a horse cross it. It was, it was an interesting day. One I won't forget, obviously. All right, so now we're gonna do that final seam here. And you'll notice this one doesn't have that tuck style quite the same way. Um, the other one did. It's just a surged edge, an overlock stitch. Um, still a solid sew, but I would say the, the Wranglers were, were better sewn here than the Levi's. See, look at that. 
pulling that apart. More thunder. Did you hear it? Growing up in Hawaii, um, we got one like one thunderstorm a year. We were on the south side of the island, um, Hickam Air Force Base, and um, I didn't have a lot of thunderstorms. There was one thunderstorm a year, and my parents all, were always on a date when it happened. Um, so it must have been around their anniversary, like whatever. And um, I just didn't have thunderstorms for some of the formative years of me growing up. Now, if you were on the north side of the island, you had more thunderstorms and stuff, but the south side didn't. Definitely thunder. Ah, oh, man, I am so going to miss this storm. It's one of my... So I have a, a friend who likes to come over when it's going to be a good storm because we have a really great view from our porch. We live downtown in the city, but it's an old house in like an old neighborhood. So the houses aren't too tall and we can almost see all the way to Boston in the sky. Not that we can see Boston, but we can see in the sky. So if like there's lightning over Boston, we can sit on our porch and watch it happen, um, which is really delightful. Right, I probably don't need to go much higher than that. What am I doing? Overkill, like usual. Pull the loose threads because I've discovered loose threads, wrap around cleaning bottles and knock them off my tables and make messes. And I don't like cleaning up messes, so let's prevent messes. And through that somewhere. <laughs> oh, I found my black wing. Black wing pencil. Oh well, it's fine. All right, we're gonna rip the other outside seam from the inside of these Levi's. Okay, so we'll rip that seam gently, carefully, because we're using the pointy side of the stick. Trying not to poke through the fabric and make a hole because this is gonna, the, the watermark, I don't know what else to call it, the watermark at the bottom of the jeans. Um, it's not a watermark, that's not the traditional use of the word watermark, but it is gonna make for a pretty, pretty element on my bag. So, you know, I hadn't thought about it, so if it's all the way perfect, it's gonna be beautiful. I hadn't thought about how much of the watermark we'll actually get um, on the bag. I don't see any rain. It's getting a little windy. The pussy willow's blowing. Oh, it's got some greenery on it. That's nice. I might open a window just so I can watch it and see all the lightning. But yeah, so I was saying we have this beautiful porch. We can see all the way to Boston. So my friend will come over and we'll eat cheese and drink wine in, in my fancy glasses while we watch the thunderstorms. Um, It's always nice. I like those kinds of summery evenings where it's warm enough that you can sit on the porch while it rains around you. Watch the sky light up. See the science happening. The electrical discharges. The clouds making beautiful gray colors. All right, I know y'all heard that one. I saw it on the microphone. I have another microphone. Maybe I should like put it up to the windows or something. And like, maybe you could hear the thunder. Would you want to hear the thunder? I don't know, that's kind of weird, isn't it? It's not what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm sure there's like weather streams and stuff like that. Um, you know, you can get like webcams or like hawk cams or you can watch like nests or eagle cams or I remember one I used to watch years ago was like a friend had, had a set of 
the chicks, uh, chicken babies, you know, like chicks. And they would like, every five minutes they'd like sleep. And then in five minutes they'd run around like crazy in the warmth of the lights. And then they'd like sleep for five minutes and then they'd get up and run around. I really want chickens one day. <laughs> I can't have them here in the city. They don't let us. Um, maybe one day I'll be able to make a case for it, but they don't really let us. Yeah, this is how seam ripping usually goes. Do you see this? This is taking a while. It's a lot of hands, hand work, direct hand work, and it's just taking a little bit of time. And you know what? That's okay. It's worth the process to reclaim this really good... Oh, that was a good one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, it's worth the process to reclaim this delectable fabric that just happened to give away at the seam because of chub rub. Um, so I get this, like, really great dark pattern see that's what color the jeans were when i originally started wearing them and then um they faded over time because that's what jeans do okay let's let's take this seam next yeah i'm gonna lift this up just a smidge so i can work just a little further back there we go i started it now i'm gonna this could go better Fingers crossed. That was great. You heard that, right? That was amazing. I'm gonna do the next one. Not as long, but it's still pretty good. It's still pretty good. There are some really great moments on these jeans that I'm, I hope to find a way to put into the final product here. Uh, but this is one of them. This is some really great deep, that's the color of my living room walls. Um, so they're deep, deep, deep dark purple and it has a black holographic glitter in it. And it's got some splatter from yep, the yep, whoa, lightning, thunder anticipation. best lightning <laughs> you weren't expecting that on this stream were you <laughs> um you know lightning's cool it's cool should i open a window should i i mean i have one window open that i can kind of peek out of I'm wondering if i should open one from my own view like over there i only have 15 minutes left on this stream by the way folks So if you want to say something to me, now is the time to say it, and I'll respond in the chat. Um, this is beautiful. This is what I'm looking for. It's a nice, basically usable denim um, to cut through. Uh, so we've seam ripped those. Now we're going to cut the car hearts. So the car hearts are going to be the front panels. And the front panels... More lighting. Um... All right, would you guys be, like, disappointed if I, like, stopped so I could watch the lightning storm? <laughs> All right, I think I know where the lightning's coming from. I'm going to open that window real quick so I can see it coming. Thanks for your patience while I did that. Now I can see the storm coming um, <laughs> next to the funeral home. It's coming over the funeral home, over to here. Um, car hearts. Car hearts come next. So if I'm cutting the car hearts, we know that I need 14 inches wide. 
at the bottom. If I make the top narrower, I don't know that I'm going to have to do this tidbit here anymore because of the new, um, because of the new, I don't know that I'm going to have to do this anymore because of the new jeans. So the Wranglers give me at least 10 inches, I think, the whole way up. Sorry, I can't do anything about the neighbor's dogs barking. So, yeah, I can do I can do ten inches all the way up. TSA requirements are fourteen twenty-two by nine. So nine, that'll be fine. I'll give myself half inches, half inch tolerances on either side. That will give me the, um, here comes the rain. There's more lightning. I love it. <laughs> Yay. The rain is good for my garden, so I really like it. Oh, and it's not snow, which means it's really spring. That's nice. Okay. Um, nine inches at the bottom. We'll probably take it to like eight inches at the top um, to lose that half inch so that when I do that roll top, it's narrower at the top. Um, so that rolling won't stick out and then I won't accidentally get um, stuff. Okay, it wasn't the power. My lights are timed for four hours because <laughs> I forget to turn them off all the time. It's fine. It's fine. The lighting's fine. Oh, don't you love the sound of rain? I hope it's coming across well for y'all. Um, so it's going to be 9 by 8. The Wrangler jeans. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's make our rectangle that's going to be... Move this table this way. I'm going to mute myself. All right, now you have a different view. Um, this one won't be as helpful, I don't think. Uh, whatever, it's gonna be a weird doubleness. Okay, move over here, give me a pencil, give me my ruler. That should do it. Now I stand here. Does this work? I think it works. I might even sit down. My feet are a little sore. It's the uh, first day of the year that I've actually worn these bad boys, my Birkenstocks, all day. So, oh, there's dye on that. I hope that didn't get on that. Oopsie. My studio can be messy. Look at that over there. Let's lay this out. Hmm, this is kind of in the way, isn't it? Okay. Here is the Carhartt, which will be the front of my bag, like that. And the Wranglers, the rest of the Carhartt. 
shirt. And the Levi's lid here. All right, now you should be able to see like kind of what I'm doing. I think I'm gonna use this um, kind of, it's a Swedish, but really pattern, old traditional Swedish pattern. And I think I'm gonna use it for the lining of the bag. Here's a random pair of jeans that we found last night as we were looking for the remote as we couldn't find it um, that I may use for some details on the bag. So, this is the wide part, right? Look at this. Nice, even wideness. There's something under here. Kids' pair of scissors. Um, you know what? I'm going to flip it to this side because that side's darker. This side's lighter, so I'm going to be able to see my pencil strokes a little bit better. Um, and we're going to see if I can mimic this seam style, I think. Yeah? Yeah? Um, now, how high do I go up on this? That, my friend, is the question. I want to be able to roll down, but I don't know how many inches the roll down should be. I know I brought my everything with me. Where is my measuring tape? It's heavy, so here it is. So, this is at that 10 inch mark. I wonder if I should use a T-square for this. T-square's right there. Oh, I should grab a big T-square. Big bad T-square. It'll keep me cutting straight. So, let's move this out. I have a tablecloth on it because of the dyeing I did earlier. Oh yeah, do uh, you need a cow vertebrae? I got cow vertebrae. I'm not gonna give it to you, it's mine. Um, why do I have it out? I don't know, because I wanted to. I just wanted to. Okay, we're gonna cut as long as I can. How about that? Without, so that gets to 35, these are long. That's nice. I didn't notice that on the tag because there's no tag because they used the printed tag. Uh, they're 47s, regular fit. The other ones were 48s. Um, so it's funny that these are wider. Note for future people, 48s Wrangler are thicker in the thigh than the 47 Carhartts. I have measurements to prove. So. I determined in my drawings over here that the tallest I really think the bag will be, the absolute tallest, is somewhere between 30 and 34 inches. That plane sounds low, it's probably the lightning. Somewhere between 30 34 inches. So, because of this new jean, I can take it almost to 35. I'm going to remove that pocket and we're going to do it. That'll give me plenty of room. So, I am T squaring this up. Nope, not the inside, the outside. Outside. So that's the straight line. So I can see that quite nicely. Now we're going to unfold this. I'm going to do the same thing up that side. It wants to fold in. That's that rivet. It's giving me challenges. All right, so that's up to 35. Well, 36, really. I'm going to mark that 35 point. And I forgot to do it over here. So I'm going to bring that back. Mark it along that line. So 35. And 
Give it a nice draw, drawn, drawed. Drawed is a word. Fine. That works nicely. So I'm gonna take my 4B, and give it a nice solid line here, and see that I have squared up this fabric. Now I gotta decide which side I want to be the bottom, which side I want to be the top. I think this is gonna be the top because again, I love that watermark. But I do need to rip that pocket off. No real surprise. I'll square up this leg as well, rip the pockets up, and maybe, if I'm lucky, I'll get to cutting it today for y'all. Oh, that's the front leg. I need the other back leg. Here we are. And we're gonna aim for that 35 again. Gosh, I love that thunderstorm. It's good for the garden. Super good for the garden. All right, bringing it up. I guess assuming by a certain amount that this is indeed straight. It does not appear to be though. I wonder if I made an error on the other side. Probably did. So let's take it to the 35 and to the one. And uh, this side. Well, that'll make sense then. If that's the bottom, it'll get just slightly wider than nine inches. Don't tell the TSA. It'll crumple though. It's going to be a soft bag, so not going to be a big deal. But we do need to square this with the seam there and uh, draw this all the way up. Squaring on fabric is hard because you know, be flat. Okay. So this is giving me 10 inches, so I have half inch to sew with. Square that bad boy up. Nice square piece. Not bad, so it's square on both. Let me double check that other back leg because I'm now suddenly a little worried it didn't quite come to the same spot. I want it to, hence my concern. Can't imagine that a manufacturer would make the left back leg and the right back leg different, but I don't know mass production sewing that well. So maybe they did. I know bespoke sewing. Uh, this doesn't look like I kept it square. Okay, let's take it square. So the one, so that seam needs to be cut. That'll solve everything, right? Sure. And let's do the other leg, because I must have missed that. I missed it. It's okay. You always learn, right? You're always learning. It's true. Always learning. Well, I guess I am kind of way over in the corner on this camera here. Uh, oh well. I'll get it better next time. All right, let's square this back up. And we're gonna see that it does indeed come in a smidge. Okay, glad I caught that. I don't think it's a huge deal or anything like that. Now let's measure at the top and make sure they're the same. Even if they're not, it'll be okay. I don't think anyone's gonna notice, but I'd like to... So that's at 11. <laughs> this is not square. <laughs> so that's 11 and like three quarters.
you know what? They're really close. I'm not going to knock it. Um, that way, <laughs> it's about 11 and 3 quarters. It's not square. I don't know what to tell you. It's fabric. It's not square. Um, hilarious. Uh, I'm going to seam rip those pockets off carefully so that I can use them in the future should I so decide. I'm going to mute while I do that so that I can move the camera around. That'll probably be all you see today of me. I might end the stream actually now. What do you think? Let's mute. Uh, so like, it's getting to time, so I'm not going to get to the cutting part. That's all right. I've seam ripped. You guys kind of see some of my ideation and I'll plan to be back and do more. Uh, cause I gotta get these done. Um, I don't know if I'll keep doing seam ripping on this camera for you. I might get some more seam ripping done, uh, tonight and then maybe tomorrow I'll come back on. Would you guys like that? Uh, let's check my schedule. So tomorrow I have a class during this hour. Uh, see so maybe in the early afternoon tomorrow if you watch for me watch for me then because um, I've got a lot more to do and hopefully the, the 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 wax will be in so I can wax this in front of you all that'll be a very interesting experiment to wax this I've never waxed or sewn with wax cotton before in my life um, so I'm interested to do that all right, I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna like use the restroom before I start my class in 10 minutes. Uh, thank you so much for joining me for this journey. Uh, I feel like we had some great conversations in the chat. Um, it was nice to meet Anna Curry and um, Oddlog came on for a bit um, and Team Squad Gaming in the United States. So um, Anna Curry was in Brazil. I don't know where Oddlog is from, but I'm so happy that all of you joined me and talked with me and asked questions. I learned about um, Anna from Russia, um, who's now in Brazil. And, um, you know, we had some real positive self-talk and like talking about making sure we talk to ourselves kindly, even though I am terrible at it. So like, don't think I've got it solved, but like, this is what we're supposed to do so that we stay normal and happy in the brain. Um, yeah, it was, I had a good time today. I hope you guys did too. Follow me if you want to see more of this. Um, I'll of course stick with my regular Wednesday schedule and maybe a little more while I make this bag. But if you want to see more of me doing this, like definitely follow because then I know you like it and that more people want it. All right. Uh, I guess I'll probably see you tomorrow, but I promise I'll be on next Wednesday. Bye.